What's up, everybody, and welcome to Real Time for the Real Everyday Movie Fan. I'm Ryan Murphy. And I'm Josh Williams. And, and I'm James. There you James go, buddy. Sheridan, you got our <laughs> special guest coming to us all the way from Toronto, Canada. So, very glad to have you with us here today, James. And we're following up our buddy, review buddy. with... I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> we're following <laughs> up our fine. review with Cobra Kai with, um, with a sort of discussion about all these sort of what I call long interval sequels, where mm. it's becoming more and more of a trend now to sort of bring back characters that we haven't seen in sometimes decades and that really amps up the hype and we're going to talk about all those i have a list of it here i know james you got a list too i'm going to start start us off with it with this one if you have anything to add let me know but we're gonna sure. uh delve right into that cool with you guys yeah okay i'm really excited about the first one because i know both of you and i know how you feel about this particular franchise and <laughs> oh god opposite. i know it's coming it's i know opposite. it's coming yeah I know it's coming. um then that is girl meets world Oh, I love that show. <laughs> I happen to know that. Oh, James Ryan, why'd you have to do this to me? <laughs> does not feel the nost same nostalgia for the original uh, that 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 Josh and I have. Uh, to be fair, when I've gone back, it, it's 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 a lot more annoying than I remember it. But oh. I will clarify. I like the early seasons of Boy Meets World mm -hmm. before they TGIF'd it when it was. When Corey had a little bit more attitude and wasn't such an idiot, like he, he was almost too smart for his own good in the early seasons. And I liked that characterization better when, he, when they, they started to move towards the college age and he became an absolute moron. It lost me there. So I kind of fell off the train of like nostalgia for that series. I so when they were bringing back the new one, I was like, I mean, it, it's Fuller House to me. It's like, there's an audience for it. I'm not part of that audience, and I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm of the opposite. Uh, I actually liked Girl Meets World. I was saddened when they canceled the series uh, after I think it was only two seasons. So it's kind of sad about that. Oh, actually, no, three seasons. I'm sorry. But I, I actually kind of disagree on that one. I feel like Corey's younger Corey was more of the, the doofus kid who didn't know a ton, but as Corey got older, he became much more mature and kind of became more like the counselor of the show where people would come Boy, to him to actually – <laughs> yep. He would kind of come, he would, he would kind of really become the kid that people would come to for their issues. And I don't know, I kind of, this, I would disagree with you on that one, James. I feel like anybody who knows me, Boy Meets World is my number one all time favorite show. I can put that on and enjoy it every single time, even from the early episodes of when it ended. And Girl Meets World is not on that same level. Like, I feel like it was getting better as the seasons go along. Like, the first season I was a huge fan of, I felt like it got better as season two and three went on. But I just, I honestly, I was, Sad to watch it go, but, you know, what can you do? You, there's nothing you can do about it because it wasn't getting as much audience as it needed to keep going. Yeah. So I'm so sort of in, in between you guys. I mean, I there's no nothing that gets more nostalgic for me than Boy Meets World. I mean, that takes me, when you talk about that takes me back, that takes me back. I mean, mm -hmm. that is like the OG uh, show. But like I said, I've caught a little bit of it, like, as an adult. And I'm like, this is a little bit more annoying. This Corey guy's a lot more obnoxious than I remember. And so it's sort of like, I can't really judge because I've seen a little bit of Girl Meets World. I've seen like bringing back Sean and all that sort of stuff that I enjoyed. Again, this show was 21 years. Uh, it was when Girl Meets World debuted, it was 21 years since the premiere of, of Boy Meets World and 14 yep. years since the end. So it was definitely hitting all the nostalgic buttons. Um, so I'm sort of somewhere in the middle of it. But moving on, then we can get, get to... Um, uh, Creed, which doesn't, it sort of counts because it was only like nine years since Rocky Balboa. Well, you, you have to back up a little bit. Yeah, because Rocky Balboa, I think, would actually be the one that you would start with because of the separation between five and Rocky Balboa. Yeah, and Rocky Balboa true. was more about Rocky and his changes over the years and all of the things he's lost and him trying to get that back. Creed, I feel, is a spinoff from Rocky Balboa more so than from the original Rocky series. Although, I mean, obviously it plays off of Apollo Creed from, you know, mm -hmm. the first and second mm -hmm. film. It is sort of a spinoff, I guess you can technically say so, but since it's still, so like usually to me, a spinoff means that they completely contrive from the main actors and go their own way. Whereas Creed still incor incorporates Rocky Balboa and all the other supporting characters from that movie or from those movies. I feel like it's still, in the Rocky world, it is still about someone else, but it still enthralls itself within 
Rocky's story and kind of entangles itself within Rocky's story. Yeah. That, but I would agree with you that Rocky Bobo, I would think, is the one that really brings back the nostalgia factor, and then Creed kind of adds on to it. It was the one with that. the longest interval because it was like a, it was thirty. It, at the time of Rocky Balboa, it was 30 years since Rocky wow. and 16 years since Rocky V. And then Creed was only nine years later. So that, that, yeah. that sort of, maybe I should have led with Rocky Balboa as the sort of longtime sequel. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously they're all, they're, they're all terrific films. I mean, that's the great thing. To be I'm, fair I'm, to you though, Creed is the one that got a on. lot of the attention, a lot of the praise. Oh yeah, it did. Well, I, and that's, that's sad too, because I think I'm one of the very few who I really love Rocky Balboa. Like, so did lot. I. You're not I one of the very few. Where'd that come from? That's totally a... Well, no, a, there's some people who think it's just okay. And it wasn't anything great or anything, you know, it wasn't as good as like, you know, one or two. But I would disagree. I think it's it's right up there. It's definitely... I mean, I, I heard you say, Ryan, they're all great. I mean, come on. Rocky Five. <laughs> Rocky no, Five. I, is, I mean, I'm talking about Rocky so Balboa. It's like the Creed bottom of the too. barrel. When it, like the thing that... You, the question that you got to uh, ask yourself whenever these come up, oh, they're making another sequel. The question is, is this a good... I, is this are, can they make an, another good story out of it you know is this just sequel mm-hmm. fodder or is it they gonna make a good story creed surprised the hell out of a lot of people uh with being such a great story and creed 2 is certainly mm-hmm. not to that same level um but i actually i don't know how anyone else feels but i really like creed but II. it's I, still great i still think it's, it's great it's it serves as a great rocky 4 2 if that makes sense it's rocky 4 2 getting to catch up with the dragos again yep. talking about catching up with characters catching up with the dragos all these years later and seeing how their lives have been affected and seeing their side of the story it's almost like cobra kai it's almost like seeing the the two sides of the of the of the fight and i adore the ending mm-hmm. of creed 2 the fact that spoiler alert the fact that drago is the one that Me throws in the towel it's just so poetic and cool and great so i'm a big fan of all three of these of these fall- oh, yeah. sequels so do you have any thoughts, more thoughts, And James? I actually thought that was probably my favorite part of Creed. Oh, yeah. James, go ahead. Um, well, I was just going to say, um, going off of your, your point about, you know, okay, I've lost my train. <laughs> um, Creed, Creed, is actually, Creed has the benefit of being um, both a really good sequel to some really good films, but also it's in a franchise that's sort of notorious for its sort of lackluster sequels because as the series went on they became progressively worse and worse and worse and rocky is sort of notorious for being that you know that series that doesn't end and it just keeps getting sequel after sequel after sequel um sort of like jaws um (laughs) and and having these updates years later where it's like oh these sequels are actually kind of good i don't know i would say um going back to creed 2 real quick i would uh, my favorite part was with the dragos out of everything else i actually thought that was my the favorite part of that whole arc of the story but what you said james uh i kind of i would say rocky 4 is better than rocky 3 and rocky 5 whereas on in contrast i still feel like like if i had to rank them from worst to best i'd probably go rocky 5 rocky 3 creed 2 um rocky 4 then creed then Rocky 2, Rocky 1. Maybe you can swap out 2 and 1 every now and again, depending upon my day, but that's where I say my rankings would go still. I don't know. I still feel like Rocky 4 actually, for as cheesy as it was, was actually a shit ton of fun. It's, I it's love the soundtrack of that film. Yeah. You have what? It's so bad, but it's so good. I know. It's, 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 it's literally the film that like... One, two, it's the three, power yeah. ballad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like... I gotta go back to my hero, Roger Ebert, like, you know... He um, he really gave very positive reviews to the first three films, and then when Rocky Four, it's like it's the same shit over again, and it is the same shit over again. But they, it's the same <laughs> shit with like a, on steroids, literally in in that case. And it's just that guilty pleasure right? that everyone has. Um, and uh, and and so yeah, then, then you know, but Creed and Creed Two, Creed Two literally combines the plots of Rocky Two, Three, and Four. Like he he he, he gets oh, yeah. the girl, get, he has a baby, uh, they're getting married. Uh, he loses the fight like in Rocky Three. He fights a Drago like in Rocky Four. They kind of push it all together, um, and but it's still really good, which is why uh, I am really I would like it to end there. There is talk of a sequel. There is oh, a, yeah. a guy who's been hired to write it, um, and Sylvester Stallone has expressed interest in uh, meeting Clubber Lang's son. And I'm like, <laughs> this is getting lame. Like, yeah, yeah that would- powerful story with the, meeting the Dragos again. We don't need to meet everyone's son. What I want to see, actually, I would not want to see that. What I would love to see to kind of wrap up its own trilogy is to have this, the the bad guy from Creed 1 
come back because he was going to jail, have him come out of jail and then fight Creed for the title again. And where he would actually win this time against, I forgot the guy's name, but Ricky Conlon. Ricky Pretty Conlon. Ricky I Conlon. thought, I think that would be a great overall arc. The guy gets out of jail. It could try to be like a redemption story for him, but he still loses at the end to Creed because Creed is on another level now. I don't know. I think that would be much better than than Clever Lang's son. I think then you're just re, then you're. I feel like the Drago one was just good enough, but if you're doing Clever Lang, you're seriously retreading. There's no powerful story there. Yeah, no, there really isn't. The yeah, the, I feel like the Drago one was much. It, it worked. It worked better. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to see that at all either. Oh, sorry, James, I cut you off. Sorry, go ahead. I I've honestly forgot my point. So. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, when all no, okay. but, um, I did want to say the other thing is that St- Stallone also has another a potential sequel idea that he's been touting um, of Rocky meeting another kid to mentor who's like an illegal immigrant, and then they go they travel south of the border, and some other stuff happens. I don't know. I. The franchise could keep going. It could die at this point. I'm very happy with the eight films being the eight films as they are. So, I mean, does Stallone really know how to say no to a sequel? <laughs> because how many Rockies has he done? How many Rambos has he done now? Exactly. If he yeah. dies, he dies. He dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, you good on that? Yeah, I, that, was, yeah. that was a good discussion. Okay. Right? I don't, we can, we can kind of, I don't know how we're going to go about this next one because you guys both know how I feel about it. I don't want to rehash super rehash my feelings that everyone knows but the star wars sequels um, See, i thought you were going to bring that one up first yeah that's what i thought, yeah, I thought going. Uh... but my feelings i don't know how I've, how i mean i know how josh feels but um the the force awakens was 30 um 38 years since um since original uh 32 years since return of the jedi and only, only 10 years since revenge of the sith but the big draw was that it was the first time we we're meeting these characters in 32 years Mm-hmm. And their response was to where are these characters in 32, where are these characters 32 years later? Their response was they, they fucked up all their lives. They're back exactly where they started. Empire's back. Jedi still haven't been rebuilt, which was the whole point of the trilogy, but it's okay. We're going to repeat the same plot with a new generation of characters. Now this person is going to be the first of the new Jedi. So that's in a very little nutshell, my thoughts on why these are three of the worst films ever made, ever made. Bar See, none. I- I think the biggest crime with these sequels was that they had 30 years of fan expectation. And I don't think that the original films promised that there would be a rebuilding of the Jedi. Um, I realize it does say return of the Jedi, but that's just that it's just Luke. It doesn't promise that there's going to be other Jedi. Um, And is it really? Yes. It's called return of the Jedi. And then they call it the last Jedi. Because Luke is back. Luke is the return of the Jedi. I, but still, I mean, is it worth it to just to, 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 to degrade that victory to just to, for the sake? I don't, I don't think it's sake? degraded, to be honest. But then it just, they just repeat it with Ray. Now it's Ray's doing all the same things Luke was doing. And now but I think Ray's trajectory is completely different from Luke's. All right, this is an interesting perspective. Go, how, how so? <sighs> You know what? I'm actually I, I'm, I'm going to pass on that because it's <laughs> going to take up the entire conversation, and I've got about like 15, 20 different films on here that we could talk about. Okay. Um, I think everyone's had their piece on Star Wars. Yes. I like the sequels. I'm not going to say that they were great, but I enjoyed them. Um, and I actually think that two of the ones that don't get enough credit are Mandalorian, which does get credit, oh. but oh, yeah, it, it's not treated as an actual sequel. And Rogue One was very underrated, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Rogue Absolutely. One was amazing. Well, I, 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 I love Solo, and I feel like I'm the only person who thinks, we remember we reviewed Josh Solo, and I surprised you, and I built it out 9 out of 10, and you were like, what? Like, yeah, you loved I, it. And, yeah, but I you thought, can so, say yeah. your piece on the, on, on the sequel trilogy. I yeah, know on the sequel, yeah, on the sequel trilogy, we're not going to talk about Rogue One or Han Solo. Han Solo was okay. Um, Rogue One was amazing. I feel like, I feel like out of all the sequels, that Rogue One was one you can fit perfectly in between the tr- the prequels and the sequel and the originals, and it, it coincides and it flows really well. It doesn't feel out of place, but it no. also kind of continues. It, it's connected tissue between the original or the the, the prequel trilogy, the new mm-hmm. trilogy, while introducing a new cast of characters that have their own story but don't conflict with anything that happened before. Well, exactly. Well, that's, that's the, the interesting. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about the Star Wars 
universe is that it's a universe. And so people like seeing blasters and lightsabers and Wookiees and robots. And so as long as you, as long as you just exist in that universe, you can make an, a, any number of films. It doesn't have to be a saga you can do. And that's what exactly what Disney was doing until solo flop for some reason. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you could just, you could tell any number of stories that just happen to be in the star Wars universe. And they're going to continue to do that to some extent. So. so going back to my thoughts on the, tr the new trilogy, I, I will still say after rewatching all three of them, I did do that recently, about a month or two ago. Um, I still love force Wiccans. I still think it can work really well. Even though it's a retread of the original series, the original film, I still think it works well. I, if if Last Jedi was its own film, it would be better. I feel like if it is like its weird own little small film. However, I feel like as a whole trilogy, it completely, it it's like it's it's on its own little world compared to the flow of the whole trilogy as a whole. And lastly, I've actually. You'll be happy, Ryan. I feel like as the trilogy progresses, it gets much worse. I, I was a huge disappointment. I was very, very disappointed in the last film. How they just throw in uh, Darth Sidious was, to me, laughable. And their explanation for it was even worse. And I feel like there was just nothing more to it there than that. And while you know, it is kind of get some redemption for Adam Driver's character for Kylo Ren, I just, I don't know. I just, it did not flow well. It did, it just was very disappointing and so i feel like when you look back at all the trilogies you i i even feel like now the prequels are getting more love than the new trilogy is mm -hmm. in a weird way so maybe we'll see in time as as these movies get more time to to age and to you know kind of go out of our minds people revisit them maybe they'll love them again who knows and maybe i'll maybe i will love them again because i knew i always liked the first phantom menace but I've grown to love more the Clone Wars and uh, Revenge of the Sith. So I don't know. We will see. I just, I was happy that they came back, but their end, the end uh, results were not what I was hoping. And it didn't help that, I mean, it, you know, the sad and passing of Carrie Fisher, because she was supposed to have a much bigger role. Uh, that was, you know, the other sad part of it. So I don't know. Well, let me, let me let, actually, now that I think about it, just let me get one last word in here. Um, okay. The main thing I don't like is we're, the whole point of this whole kind of show we're doing is that these these sequels, their, their main appeal is let's catch up with these guys. Let's see what they've been up to. And in the case of Han, Luke, and Leia, who we all love, it's the answer is shit. Like their yeah. lives turn to shit. Everything sucks. Like Han and Leia are divorced. Luke never rebuilt the Jedi. He's a hermit. Every, like Han dies. Like everything fucking sucks. Everyone. Leia was just, pretty good. Leia was in a good situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, her son's in the dark side and everything. I just, uh, that's what I hated. That's, that's like, I don't want to come back and see everything sucks, but I don't know. But also, I, I, would, I would also counter argue that is yes, the appeal is, the appeal is bringing back these characters who we know and love to, you know, bring them to people's eyes. But I'd also, out of all these, these uh, sequels that we're getting, that we're bringing in old faces. We're also, they're focusing on the new faces. Yeah. They're the, the, where the, the old faces are the bringing it in, but they're more background characters. Yeah. Which you, we got to keep that in mind too. when we're talking about these discussions. Now, do I think they did a good job with a lot of these characters that they brought to the forefront? Yes. I love Ray character. I think Ray character is Ray character. Uh, now who, how her end result and who she is not so much. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't, I thought it would have been better. I actually, that was the one thing about Last Jedi I thought was great. Is like she was a nobody. I was mm -hmm. cool with that. She didn't have to be some intricate thread to this whole story. I mean that this, that shrinks their their universe. Mm -hmm. I actually liked the idea that she was literally just a nobody. And but and so we kind of going back to that. That's I think that's what helps. But yeah, it doesn't help when you see some of your characters kind of just die off. Mm -hmm. Now Carrie Fisher, you know, Carrie Fisher, you know Princess Leia. There was nothing you could do about that. But I feel like they should not have killed off Luke Skywalker mm -hmm. the way they did. But I digress. Like, we All got right. lots of other ones to talk about. We got about, so many so <laughs> more to do. We got, we got to move on. Um, and some so of I'm, these liking, we can I'm just, liking the discussion. I'm liking the discussion. But, but some of these we can just literally just, just say the name and then say, okay, that exists and move on. Because we might not have anything to say about it. For instance, mm -hmm. 2016 now, Polar House. Does anyone know? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, 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 love, I love the original 20, House. Hold on. 29 years. 29 years since the debut. 21 years since the finale was, was, the, was the interim. So it was a 21-year interim. So mm -hmm. anything? You have one thing to say about that? Uh, I love the original show. <sighs> love it. I can, I, I can watch that show all, all, all the time. It's not as good as Women's World, in my opinion, but it's still great. Um, what I didn't like about Fuller House is 
what, how you talk about Girl Meets World and Boy Meets World, the feel, the atmosphere is still there. And yeah, it's a little more Disney, Disney eyes, I like to call it, Girl Meets World is. But the feeling, the atmosphere like we talk about with some of these things is still there. Whereas Fuller House, it just did not feel like it was much brighter. There was more jokes. There was, it felt too clean. That's what I hate the most is when a, when a show looks and feels too clean. You guys know what I mean by that? Like yeah. the, set, the sets, the, the costume, the, the people, the makeup, like it, there's no organic feel to it. Whereas when you go up and watch Full House and you watch this one, it's like night and day difference as far as the, the, the feel and the atmosphere of it. And even just, it wasn't that great. It just, it wasn't, it didn't recapture that. And it has nothing to do with the Olsen twins not being there. It has nothing to do with that. <laughs> they could have not been in it and it would still been fine. It's just, they didn't, they didn't stick to their core reasoning for being that makes sense like full house like the the full house the reason for that was you have some jokes but you also had a great have a great moral to your to the situation of the episode and they just didn't quite do it they relied more on the the jokes and more on the comedic elements and relying more on the message of life Mm -hmm. and i feel like that's where it lacked the most and just i i watched a few episodes the first season and i was like nope i'm done i don't even care i'm just i'm over it so I, I was never a fan of Full House. I mean, I was when I was a kid. I liked Full House, mm-hmm. but like nostalgia didn't really kind of make didn't behold that to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and watching it years later, it's like, oh, this show does not stand up very well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and watching Fuller House felt to me like I don't like any of these characters. The only character <laughs> I actually like is Kimmy Gibbler, and it's like I'm not supposed to like Kimmy Gibbler. <laughs> the rest of them I don't actually enjoy and it's like I don't know why I'm spending time watching characters I don't enjoy mm-hmm. so I stopped watching it yeah that's fair uh, that, that, that's all I really had yeah that's way more than I was expecting to talk about Fuller House okay moving on <laughs> 2000, 2018 uh, Roseanne um, Roseanne was a great show and the remake from what I've seen it is just kind of more of the same catching up with everybody and um, yeah so again it's one of those things not much to say about it it is more the same and regardless of who Roseanne Barr is as a person that's regardless. Like, I still love the show, especially the original. Mm-hmm. Uh, the new show is still good. It's much better than Fuller House is to its, you know, its counterpart original. But, you know, I feel like even though they, while well, I was okay and I agree with why they had to remove Roseanne, the actor mm-hmm. from the show, given her yeah. controversial, you know, thoughts on things. <laughs> I still feel like without her, because I watched it, like I didn't watch every single episode, but I watched you know here and there, sure. and then when she was gone off the episode, I watched a few of them. Without her, just it's missing something. The character, I should say, yeah, it's really missing something special. Like I won't say special, but I'm really missing that edge that Roseanne that Roseanne character had to the show. And so after that, I was just kind of it lost it for me. Now, did it do anything new and fun to add to its series? You know, because you're bringing back all these faces. No, it's just kind of all the same. So it loses a little bit of that aspect of it too. It loses it for me. So that's all I really have. It, it, I was glad it was back, but it wasn't like, oh my God, it's back and I'm so excited kind of thing. So. Anything I, I have no thoughts on it because okay. I was never a fan of Roseanne and okay. I didn't bother with the new series. The only thing that I thought was going to be exciting was the fact that, you know, in the years since John Goodman's become, you know, a tour de force unto his own and mm-hmm. having him lead a series to me would be fun. Yeah, but Roseanne wasn't enough to kind of pull me into watching a series about him, even if the new series is about Dan uh, mm-hmm. now. Um, I, again, it was another one that I just didn't feel the time spending my time on. Yeah, okay. and I find it funny that uh, sorry, just real quick, I just find it funny that they killed off his character in the original show and they brought him back just because he's such a great actor <laughs> that you got to have him in it. So I don't know. I thought that was funny. Yeah, um, Roseanne was thirty. By the way, thirty years. I have to keep saying these stats. Thirty years since the um, uh, since the debut of the original, and twenty-one years since the finale. So it's a twenty-one year interim. Uh, next up, we can just say we just say that we just did a review of it. Was Cobra Kai? Um, Thirty-four years since the original. Twenty-nine years since uh, since uh, uh, Karate Kid Part Three. So it was a twenty-nine year interval, not counting the next Karate Kid because none of the characters from that come back. Um, but yeah, we just did a review and we all. Loved it, so, right? Oh, yeah. Check it out, guys. It's good. <laughs> uh, another one is Halloween, which is an interesting, because it's a re- what I call the re-sequel. <laughs> it's, um, so it was 40 years since the original. It was only 11 years since the last, since Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, since the last franchise installment. But it was 17 which years. It isn't really Halloween. Like, it's, it's, it's a Rob Zombie film more than it is a Halloween film, let's face okay. it. I love it the was, first one. The second one sucks. 
the 17 years since um, the last installment of the original series, which Jamie Lee Curtis was in, in which she died. Um, and, and then this one resets the timeline. So it has been a full 40 years mm. since anything. So, and if, I remember going into the movie and really feeling like, oh my God, this is the first time in 40 years, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, Josh, this is really interesting is that um, we did a review and I think I gave it a six out of 10. And then I wouldn't shut up about it for the next week. I kept texting you because I really, it was so much in the film that I really responded to that even though at first, my first reaction was sort of tepid that it really kind of warmed up to it over the next week. So I would probably give that film at least an eight now. Oh yeah. And uh, didn't we see it together? We did see it together. Yeah. yeah, You came down to visit me here in Missouri and we saw it together. I loved And Yeah, I agree. I think my score has even gotten higher. They did so many things, so many things right in that, in the newest Halloween that I feel like I was perfectly fine, even though they erased everything that they did before. I'm okay with it. I'm perfectly fine with it now that we've gotten what we've gotten. And like, we can just talk on and on about that movie, but I will say given that every it's been, there's not very much time has passed technically speaking when we see Michael Myers and some of these characters, it still felt new and it felt exciting to where now, like I'm, I'm really. They've already have two movies coming out for for the trilogy, and I'm more excited than ever to see how they how they turn out. I think uh, what was his uh, what was his first name? Some uh, David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green. There we go. Thank you. I was gonna say David. I think in his hands, this, this franchise is in, is really in a good situation right now. Uh, James, are you a fan of horror? Like, I mean, I love the first Halloween. First Halloween to me is like if you think horror movies, and then Michael Myers, my favorite character love them to death uh so do you are you a fan of horror as far as this goes i'm not a fan of horror per se there are certain franchises that i've kind of latched on to like um take it or leave it whether you count it as horror or not i think the the background of it is actually more interesting um poltergeist is absolutely one of my all-time favorite films um most horror especially like 80s horror um like the nightmare on elm street and Mm -hmm. friday the 13th i'm not a huge fan of Mm -hmm. halloween i have to give it credit because it is such you know a, a pivotal film. I'm not a big fan of the trajectory that the fil- like, you know, the genre took after that, where it became all slasher and less sort of cerebral kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I think that the sequels kind of go back to the more cerebral. Um, it, like his, his killings were were brutal, but they weren't like tormenting the kids in their dreams, kind of brutal kind of thing. I don't know. Um, they were more strategic. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't even say strategic he's more of a like force of nature like an animal yeah. than he is um yeah. you know a psychotic serial killer kind of thing um and i think that the i actually thought that the teaser for this was one of the best teasers i've ever seen where it's just him alone in that prison yard kind of chained to those blocks and it's like it it, sh- it it just gives such gravitas to this character that this is mm-hmm. how you know it, they're almost treating him in such an inhumane way, but it's like, how else do you cage this animal? And yeah, I, you yeah. really can't. And that's, that's, that's one of the fun things about it. And I, I, I really kind of latched onto that. And yeah, I, I, as much as I'm not a big horror fan, the, the, these Halloween films, I'm kind of like grabbing towards now. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where they take the next two films. Yeah. And I think they added that mistake. I think one of Ryan's fair points, now that's where I'm going to segue to Ryan is, I think one of Ryan, Ryan's favorite moments is one of mine too, is where without his mask, they still don't show his face. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's on a filmmaking standpoint, it's quite genius because it gives, it doesn't give, cause he's not, he doesn't have a face. Like you said, he's a force. He's of not nature. human. He's yeah. not yeah. human. And well, I think, yeah, that was, they, they show some of his face and they show that he has like a little this bit. beard, which yeah, was like, bit. I like the fact that he has a beard of all things because it shows that he is <laughs> human with like something under that mask. That mask is not his true face. Well, those, yeah. those shots to me are less about the beard and more about showing, showing the scars of like where yeah. Lori jabbed him in the neck. And it's like, there's they're still history here and they haven't forgotten that history. And mm-hmm. even just showing that small shot tells me that, you know, they're paying attention to where these characters came from. And it's not just, we're making another film because Mike Myers is, Michael Myers is scary and mm-hmm. we want to see what he's going to do next. It's, there, there, there's something here to respect and move forward on um well yeah i'm glad i'm glad you brought that up because for me like we said it's all about is this what do you think about the fact they're making a sequel to that well can they make a good story and in this case it was absolutely there's a story here that's why this mm-hmm. is the best halloween sequel of them all because 
when you go back to the first Halloween, when she drops off the key to the house because her dad's a realtor, right? And she just has to drop the key off to the Myers house and he sees her and he latches onto her and says, that's my victim. From that mm -hmm. moment on, their fates are intertwined. And the first movie is just this thriller about how he's coming after us. It's one guy coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, and then, he, and then he's there, okay? This movie says, ever since that happened, she had, cannot be at rest until, uh, she cannot be at rest either. And there's this brilliant montage scene um, with a great score um, in, in, the, in the first third of the movie where she goes to the prison to, tr to see him be transferred and get out of her life. And there's this montage of the two of them and you get the feeling that ever since that moment where he picked her as his victim, these two are just two, it's like yin and yang and neither one will have any peace until basically one of them kills the other. And then once he gets out, out. Yeah, and once he gets out, she's as, she's as jonesing for him as he is for her. Mm -hmm. Like she's loving. I mean, she's it. built a death house for him. Right. right. So Which, whereas the by first the way, film was awesome. Yeah. So it forms this brilliant duology. Whereas the first film is like he's coming, he's coming. The second film, the second film is it's a collision course. When will these two finally meet? And I and that, love that. And that and that part to me was also a great aspect of it because when they actually start fighting in her home. And it kind of flips the script in a way. Like when he kicks her out of the window, he looks down and she's gone. And all of a sudden he yeah. becomes the hunted. That was, and yes. that was so great. We like, were in the theater favorite. and we were cheering when that happened. We yes. loved it. Because it, 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 it tells me that the, that the director knows what film he's making and how to mm -hmm. not just remake that film, but play with the same ideas and move it forward. Where mm -hmm. now it's not Michael Myers that's, you know, creeping out the window. It's Laurie that's, you know, out the window and disappearing and... Yep. It was great. But that makes me wonder, I love it so much as, a, as like a perfect duology, so it's just like the yin and yang, the films. Um, I'm like, they're going to make two sequels? Like, what are those even going to... Are those going to be good or what? But I know that they both take place. Here's what we know is that the, the, the whole trilogy, this, the last film and the next two are all going to take place in the same night. Oh, so, that's, oh yeah. That's, that's compelling. That. That's mm. pretty crazy. It's going to be pretty... Yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. I... I'm curious what's going to happen because he, he ends up being caged in in this huge fiery inferno. How the hell is he going to escape? But it's Michael Myers. He always well, they, finds a way They showed the teaser and they literally just showed like the, um, the fire brigade coming. And I was like, oh, yeah, duh. That's how it gets out. Like, <laughs> the fire department, fire department comes and, and he's like, right this, yeah. yeah, this is This is my number one favorite horror character of all time. I mean, I'm him. I'm, I've been to him for Halloween at least four or five times in my life. And I really happy that this show while i do love some of the old shows old, old movies i'm loving that this movie is back to its prestige that it was in the first film mm -hmm. like because you know the other ones are more guilty pleasures like curse of michael myers and four or five <laughs> like those are more guilty pleasures whereas this one really is up there as far as quality yeah because anybody nobody can argue that the first halloween is one of the greatest horror films of all time it really yeah, brought back the respectability. Uh, it really did, franchise. and I'm happy about that, as a, as a Hall, as a Michael Myers fan. All right, um, and then here's another one we can just touch on and move past because I don't think anyone has anything to say. Uh, Rambo, 37 years since Rambo one, 11 years, so it's not even that long of an interval. Only 11 years since Rambo, but the last one was longer. There was a longer interval between Rambo three and four than there was between. But basically, it's all just Rambo killing people, right? So. I feel like I I'm like going to have my film nerd um, card removed for this, but I've actually never seen a Rambo film <laughs> because they've never looked interesting to me. It just looks oh. like men killing other men. And it's like, it is, that's it. It is. Uh, sure. I, I guess. <laughs> like, I mean, at least Predator had, you know, some sort of monster killing men. And that was a little more interesting, but yeah. like, I don't know. Rambo has just <clears throat> never appealed to me. And the, the fact that keep making sequels, is like <clears throat> Sylvester Stallone, just retire, please. <laughs> like or do something else find a new franchise yeah. and this and just something that we can talk about it's i mean i like the show the movies are okay i keep saying shows i like the movies they're okay um the first blood actually is one of the best action films ever made one of but as they've gotten more and more along and he's gotten older they've reduced in quality drastically this most recent one was basically home alone on steroids <laughs> and i wasn't a huge fan of it it was, it was, I mean, there was a certain point in time where something happens and it shifts. It started out okay, then it became trash. And I, this is one of those ones where we talked about like the excitement was initially there when they started bringing them back. But since the quality is not there, my interest is no longer there. So, 
That's fair. Uh, moving on, and this is another one, Star Wars, just like Star Wars, you know exactly how I feel about it, because it is the same thing as Star Wars, and that is Terminator Dark Fate. 35 oh. years since the first Terminator, only four years since the last Terminator film, but 28 years since uh, Lynn Hamilton came back, and this is resetting, it's a resequel, so 28 years since T2, and you know I feel the exact same way about this. It is, it is The Force Awakens, it literally hits all the same buttons. You bring back the character. Worse. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> you bring back the character. The, there's a new bad guy that's the same thing as the old bad guy. You remove all the victories. You kill off the character. You remove, you remove all their victories by saying that they didn't change anything. Um, the, then you just kill off the, one of the main characters from the last show just for the sake of repeating the exact same story with a new cast. And I have not seen Terminator Dark Fate. I don't plan on watching it anytime soon. I've read the Wikipedia plot summary, so I'm good. Um, and I just but, don't, what bugs me, that what bugs the hell out of me is that this isn't just a couple of idiots who got together and decided to do this. This was James Cameron's return to the franchise. That was the big marketing thing. Jane, this is, this is, we're finally gonna get, you know, Terminator 3 and 4 and 5 were just, you know, other douchebags trying to cash in on his legacy. This is finally James Cameron's Terminator 3. And it's horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> so go now, ahead you, you said you said this was a lot like Star Wars as far as their what they did with the, the franchise they did more like what Halloween did they just didn't execute it well mm -hmm. they they I don't know and the fact that okay this is spoiler territory right like we're talking spoilers this, this oh, yeah. stuff right mm -hmm. the fact they killed John Connor just I I about walked out of the fucking theater right then and there mm -hmm. honestly I was just, I was extremely pissed at the opening sequence that's what that is and I just, I couldn't, I don't know. And the quality of the film, I, for having James Cameron stamped on it, I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how he thought this was going to be okay. And it has nothing to do with characters. Actually, the, the new hybrid Terminator human girl was actually a good character. I didn't mind her at all. She was kind of, she's pretty badass. I just, I don't know. They just rehashed the episode two with just some extra Rehash twists and it. turns. And I just, it, it was even though okay, so even though Force Awakens was you can call it a rehash. Some people call it a rehash of the original film. Mm -hmm. I call it more of like an homage, like something you pay tribute to. This was literally trying to copy and paste with added with adding some more stuff to it to make it seem more complex, mm -hmm. and it just did not work for me. I now that if they even I highly doubt they're going to continue because that movie flopped as far as oh yeah, dude, it's over. Wide. It's, it's done. Uh, I'm yeah. glad so because I was saddened because. I mean, I don't know if you know James, but I know I know Ryan and Terminator Two is like his favorite film of all time. You just oh yeah, I I've heard Ryan it. go on about it. <laughs> we, I mean, me and Ryan saw it in theaters at the AMC theaters back in the day, and you just don't make them like that anymore. Yeah, that's, that's probably... the thing is that we came out of that movie theater, and it was one of the best movie going experiences in my life. When Josh, yeah. and I, I will tell my grandkids about it. Like remember when Uncle Josh and I finally got to go <laughs> see T Two in theaters, and it was so oh, great. Nice. We walked out of the theater, and we still to this day we'll just say to each other. They don't, make, don't them like make them like that. They don't like them it's, like it's, that it's, it's amazing. And maybe it's, and I don't know if maybe like the bar was so high that our expectations were too high. I don't know. But I, I don't know for a definitive fact, but I will say just when you take the film on, on, on its own, the structure is just a mess. The plots, there's so many plot holes in, the, in that film that you could, yeah, I mean, it could really probably make a character. Like if you put the whole you know, mm -hmm. film on a, a drawing, you can have so many plot holes, you can see through it. I, just, I love I, how yeah, I love yeah. how J James has just been totally silent this whole time. Like, <laughs> I know James. Do you not... have any thoughts on it? Yeah. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, on unfortunately, it, James? I mean, I love Terminator Two, Terminator less so. Um, I love I think Terminator it's Very 1. dated, and I think it's it's a little weaker. But Terminator Two is iconic. No one can argue that it's you know one of the best action films of all time, uh -huh. one of the most influential action films of all time, mm -hmm. um, and probably one of the best films of the '90s. Um, I've never been a fan of any of the sequels. And since the third one, I've had, you know, diminishing interest in even watching. I don't think I've seen the last two. Um, I saw the one with, um, oh, I can't even remember his name now. Christian Bale? Uh, with Batman. Oh, um, yeah. Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian uh, Bale. Terminator I Salvation, yeah. I, I stopped watching, like, my brain just turned off halfway through that film and just went, ooh, pretty colors. <laughs> And that's about where I've stopped watching. Like, I, I think I saw the one with um, Daenerys Targaryen in it, but um, oh. uh, sure, it exists. And then this one, like, I was interested in the idea that James Cameron was coming back. I'm not his biggest fan, but it's like, 
you know, at least the granddaddy of the franchise is going to be there. And, you know, Linda Hamilton's back and she's badass. And I think that, she was badass. You know, so having that. more the um, bitterly divorced female couple. led action films is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's one of the most iconic, you know, action, female action heroes of all time. So having oh, yeah. her back is really cool. But it's like, it's another Terminator film. And uh, I think they've kind of run their course. And yeah. I'll wait for it to come on Netflix. And. I'm one of the very few who actually like Terminator Salvation. I actually thought it was pretty solid. Well, here's, I'm weird. Here's, I'm weird. Here's, here's my thoughts on all that is that I love the ending of Terminator 2 so much. The, the fact that they, they close it there. It's a perfect duology. And if they can ever make a Terminator 3 that actually is a great story and continues on in a great way, great for them. But I don't really think it exists. I don't think it's out there in the ether for someone to grab and, and make a movie out of. I just don't think it's out there. I think that they can try, but it's not. And I think the closest they've ever come, as far as just premises go, is Terminator Salvation. Just make a movie about the future war. If you want to continue the franchise, just make a movie about blowing shit up in the future war. But and other if we than can, that, I just don't yeah. think it exists. And if we can end um, what I think here, then we can move on. I think if they were to do a trilogy, if they, if they wanted to really close this trilogy out, I think they should just, like, the opening of that last film, it's like it's kind of like at the beginning of T2. You see the skull smash down the Terminator, and, and it's like John Connor's character said, "We tried to prevent it. It was inevitable. The war is here, and it's about him trying to end, literally end the war." And they did that with the one film. I can't remember. It was the one with um, Daenerys Targaryen, in it, but it didn't work because they're going back and forth in time. I feel like you just stick to the future, and then you can wrap yourself back around where he kind of do what Salvation did, but better. Where he's not, because in Turn of Salvation, Christian Bale's character is more like a lieutenant. He wasn't the leader leader. This, mm-hmm. and I feel like in the trilogy, he is the leader. Yeah. And they're trying to end the war. And you can have so many more great dynamics with it of him meeting his father, like kind of rehashing some of what Terminator Salvation did, but better. I don't know. I think that's where you could really close out trilogy and then bring it wrap around to where it wraps around back around to, to T1. And it kind of becomes this, like this never ending circle of a trilogy. I think that would work really well. But there's, for some reason, they, I don't know. I, I will say that, that one of the lost gems of Terminator was actually the, the Sarah Connor Chronicles second season was actually really good television. Never seen and it. I, I, I thought it was fun. Um, and I thought, unfortunately, they ended on a cliffhanger and never got a third season. And it's like, <laughs> they ended in a way that it's like, I really want to see where that story is going, but it never happened. Um, so, I mean, if I was to include a trilogy, I'd say that one, but you know, I'm happy with just leaving it at Terminator 2 and just pretending the rest don't exist. Absolutely. I think that's a good place to leave on that one. 2020, uh, Star Trek Picard. I personally was so... I haven't seen it yet. I was so happy with the way this turned out because when they, again, when they announce these and you say, that's a, that sounds like a good idea. I, I would love to see Picard again, but is it going to be good? And there's so much in the world today that's bad and just like... It's, it was such a relief when this showed up and it was like, oh my God, it's good. It's really good. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's great to catch up with Picard and everybody. And I, I, I'll be perfectly honest, I haven't finished the season because I refused to watch it without my, one of my good friends who I was watching it with. So I, then, then COVID hit and I haven't been to his house and then I moved away. And so I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. But I, so the, what I've seen is really, really good. And I, I'm so thrilled that they not only brought the next generation back, we're moving forward with the original timeline with the next generation characters and it's good that's all i can say i haven't watched picard yet i mean i'm, I'm a huge fan of next generation like i feel like when you think of, like i feel like i'm when i think of star trek i think more picard than kirk in a weird yeah. way as far as the tv shows go now the movies of course star trek films you definitely think of kirk because because uh, chris pine did such a great job I will. I think I will eventually check out Picard. I was a little apprehensive for some reason, mm-hmm. um, but I feel like with the praise I've been hearing and with Ryan, you just saying what you said, I think I will check it out finally. I'm just curious though. Will they? Are they gonna bring? Because correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Will Wheaton's character in Next Gen? Are they? Did they bring him back at all? No, they only brought. He was back- not in it. Yeah. They only brought um, back Picard, and then well, Data's dead, but Data comes like Brent Spiner reprised the role in like Dreams. Which is <laughs> cool to see. Um, but the only other characters besides Picard that have been so far are Riker and Troy. He goes okay. to see them in one episode. Mm, not true. Oh, Hugh returns. Oh, Hugh, yeah. From, okay. It was actually yeah. the the Hugh and episodes of, nine, of Next Voyager. Generation were my favorite all time Next Generation episodes. Mm. So I absolutely love that they brought him back. 
my only complaint with the card was that I didn't care about the new characters at all. Mm. And every time they were on screen, I'm like, just just get back to the next generation characters. Just forget. <laughs> I, I don't care about these people. Just go back to Picard. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, most of the season is built around developing these new characters. Um, and I won't. I'm just going to say that I wasn't a big fan of where the season went towards the end. Won't mm. say what happens. Won't say why I didn't like it. Just because I didn't feel as strong as I did when I started the series. Yeah. So it, had the op- so it had the opposite effect of what Cobra Kai did to where all you cared about was the original characters. Mm. They just, they didn't have good, okay, that's interesting. They didn't have good actual yeah. new characters. Okay. It's not that the new characters aren't good. It's just, I'm not, I don't Invested. find them compelling. Okay. Um, your mileage may vary. Um, I was, I mean, to be fair, I'm going to part to card purely for the nostalgia where I went into Cobra Kai thinking I'm not, as nostalgic for Karate Kid as I am for Next Generation. Like, I grew up on Next Generation watching that daily, um, sometimes several times a day. I think I've seen um, um, First Contact, you know, a few hundred times because it's absolutely (laughs) my favorite Trek film. Um, I love The Borg. So that film is just beyond great. And those aspects of the series were great, but it's just sort of like... It's sort of like I don't we want. Care about you new people. We're here for Picard. Why don't they just yeah. make? They, they could have just made the whole series like instead of going off with a new group of people, he goes and recruits his old crew, and it's and and it start. That's what when they. I mean, they could have made the series. series Patrick Stewart sitting in a goddamn lounge chair just reading Shakespeare to me, which he's doing over Facebook anyway, right now. But it's like, do that, and I'll watch the series. So let me let me throw this question out to you guys let's, before we get into our next one, because this actually to me I think is a great discussion for this episode for the show that we're doing. Is okay. So you, James, you brought up that you mainly are at Picard for the nostalgia factor. That's what you were hyped for because the characters. Whereas Cobra Kai, you weren't so invested for the nostalgia, but you mm-hmm. still watched it. My question, to you guys, is: Do you think there is a a hype line for certain people to where like they'll go to a show like the, to like these for like how do I ask this? Like, do you think that their hype for the movie is more based um, like if they if they have more nostalgia for it, they're more interested? Or is it more based on like the quality of possibly of the of the show? I like, think the hype. And also, do you think that? Will and go you, there sorry, for the hype. Yeah, and I'm uh, sorry. Last with the add to it. Do you think that also not say skewed, but how they view it is through a, that kind of lens? It's like they how they're viewing it is how their nostalgia factor plays into it. When it comes to shows like Picard and Cobra Kai, I think the fan base will go for it for the nostalgia. I think the general public aren't going to go for it for that necessarily. I think, and you especially see this with Cobra Kai, it's more about the word of mouth about how good the series is. And more people I knew who aren't Star Trek fans went to Picard after they'd heard from their Star Trek fan friends how great the series is. Same with Cobra Kai. I don't know anyone besides myself who actually has a YouTube premium account. So nobody I know saw this you know, for the two years it wasn't on, all of a sudden it hits Netflix and everybody's raving about this show and Mm -hmm. everybody I know goes to watch it. And most people I know watch it in like a weekend. And it's, it's a 20 hour show. Like it's, it's not easy to fit into a weekend. If you've got a busy weekend, if you're like me and you're doing nothing, (laughs) sure. You can hammer that out in a day, but um, I, I think that and I think it's built this way where they're, they're, they're designing the show to be, appealing to the fan base but hoping that the word of mouth is strong enough to get in the general population um because especially with this there isn't you know with films you get trailers and you get like a lot of you know posters and um all kinds of stuff with tv shows you don't get that nearly as much especially something like cobra kai which was kind of a hidden gem on the internet for the longest time um and i think picard there there was a bit more television push for it but because it was an online like you had to have a um, CBS, I think it's their all yeah, access all account. Access. It's different mm-hmm. in Canada. I'm in Canada, so we actually have to watch it through a completely different paid service. But um, I paid for the service just to watch Picard. So, like, I, I think there is that kind of like you, you need that word of mouth for these to actually kind of catch on. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe that's why Terminator flops so bad, is it? Because people have been burned so much by Terminator that even though James Cameron was coming back and that was their main slogan. I'm guessing that's probably why it flopped is 
because the word of mouth was that it was terrible after the film I, was released and that and going off of that i think that's why creed became such a surprise hit was because mm-hmm. a lot of people were burnt out on rocky sequels and you know creed became this you know everybody was kind of praising creed like i crazy um praise for creed so mm-hmm. i think that word of mouth really helped it with people going oh this is actually good mm-hmm. yeah that's the thing. It's like I said, leading up to Picard, the question is, okay, that's a great idea. Is it going to be good? And sometimes it, it's a, re- and sometimes it sounds like Creed. Oh my God, they're more rocky. And then it just, oh my God, like this is so good. And with Picard, mm-hmm. it's just, this is really Cobra Kai. These like, when, it, when people, when it comes down, it's really good. That word of mouth gets around and it can really help it. So what's the next one, man? Uh, next one is the last one for as far as stuff that's um, on my list anyway. Maybe you have something to add, James. This is the last one of stuff that's already come out, not stuff that's coming out, and that's Bill and Ted Face the Music. Not only have I not seen it, I have not seen the second Bill and Ted. I've never seen Bogus Journey. So I have what? no thoughts, except that I have heard amazing things about Face the Music. I've heard people just like, oh my God, this is this gave me hope again. So <laughs> I haven't seen it yet either. I'm sad. I actually have. I can watch it anytime I want right now. I just I've been so busy with my normal stuff, like editing photo, uh, editing photos and videos and everything like in school. That I'm probably gonna end up. I have a free day today. I'm probably gonna end up watching that too today. But so I guess Bill, this is where I get to flex my muscle because I actually did get to see this one. All right. Yeah. And much like Karate Kid, I wasn't a huge fan of Bill and Ted. Like I liked it when I was a kid. Watched it years later. And I'm like, oh, this does not hold up. Um. So I wasn't looking forward to this one. But it, you know, popped up on, you know, on demand and I'm like, what the hell? I've got 20 bucks. I'll, you know, rent it and watch it. And it's like, oh, this is actually good. Okay. They actually advance the characters. Um, it's no secret if you've seen the trailer, you know, they've, they've got daughters now and they're sort of like washed up uh, musicians. Like things have not turned out the way they were supposed to. They didn't save the world. They didn't unite humanity. And now all of reality is going to end if they don't write the song to unite all of existence. So it's their journey trying to do that. And um, I feel like a lot of the jokes are not great. (laughs) Some of the story is okay. Um, I mean, if you're a Bill and Ted fan, it's probably exactly your humor. It didn't quite work for me. But I think that the character journey um, is actually kind of compelling and... I won't spoil the ending, but I really love the ending. So okay. um, it's it's it surprised me, and um, I especially appreciate the development of the daughter characters in it okay. because it, it's fifty percent their movie. Interesting, yeah. Because yeah. the trailers, it's all mainly the two. I think that's where like the nostalgia factor comes is that they're relying on these two actors to bring you in. Because that's all I never really saw much of their daughters in the trailers. The second men. trailer had a little more of the daughters. Yeah, they did. It did. And that was that was part that kind of intrigued me. And the, the reason I've been apprehensive to watch it, and I say this because that is, okay, Keanu Reeves was great when he was younger in his comedic elements. He was fine. I thought he was funny. But then became like this huge action star. Now that with him in John Wick, it's hard for me to see him. It, it's hard for me to know if he can still have a comedic, the comedic chops that he did back then because he's such an amazing action star now. Is that, are my concerns valid or are they wrong? I will say that um, in my opinion, he was the weakest link in this film. I think, um, I can't remember his name, but Alex Alex um, Winter. Alex Winters actually carries the duo very well. But to me, the absolute gems of this film are the two daughters. Okay. And they absolutely are. There, there's moments where it feels like they're mimicking Bill and Ted just a little too much, where it's like they're almost doing an impression. Like <laughs> um, going back to Star Trek, a lot of people really liked um, what's his name's version of Bones, but I always felt like he was trying too hard oh. to do an impression oh, Carl, Carl of Carl. Bones as opposed to being genuinely sort of DeForest Kelly. And that's always kind of stuck in my craw with those films. And I feel like the, the daughters border on that just a little too much, but they're still so compelling in themselves that I kind of get over it after a little while. You give them a pass. Yeah, I give them a pass. Okay. Uh, I didn't mind uh, him as, as both. Damn it, I, I, I think I'm alone <laughs> in that uh, opinion. Like I, I think a lot of people really liked him, but 
You to me, Dolores there. Kelly was my favorite character in the original Trek, so. Yeah. All right, All right. well, I'll have to check that out, but. Uh, so, James, you actually had a couple more on your list that I had forgotten. Uh, I there, there's a few on my list. Um, there's one that I wanted to mention um, specifically because I actually really liked the updates better than the original, um, Jumanji. Ah. Okay. I was yes. not such a huge fan of the original. Watched it when it came out. Not a big fan. I, I think nostalgia is, again, the thing, a factor that kind of skews people's opinion of that one. Mm -hmm. But from the first time I saw the trailers of the second one, I'm like, these are funny. I think that people get the concept, are not taking it too seriously, and are having fun with it. And when I saw the movie, it paid off that exactly. Um, I thought the sequel did the fun thing where it's taking everything it did in the first one, flipping it, flipping it on its ear, and um, again, having fun with it being a video game, it being a sequel to the originals without actually, um, you know, sort of being beholden to it. Like, it can be its own continuity without actually, like, you don't need to see the original to enjoy these, but it, it you know, leaves it open to be part of the same universe. And then um, the end of the second one leaves it at a point where, you kind of know where the third one is going and it's like, oh, I really need to see the third one now because I really want to see where they're going to take the story. Oh, so it leaves you, leaves you on like a, it leaves you it does. kind of cliffy. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah. That's an interesting one because that's, all the other ones we're talking about are like, like I said, catching up with characters, whereas Jumanji doesn't have any of the same characters from the first film to the no. second film. So, it's um, more about the world of Jumanji and I'm glad that they continued on with the world, not just remaking it. Because, like, especially, like, in the first Jumanji, you see where it, the place where um, Robin Williams' character lived at in Jumanji, mm -hmm. you know, I like that aspect, how they kind of still pay homage to that character without having him in it. I actually was of the exact opposite of James. I actually really loved the first. It's, and I really, the first one, and it's, uh, people could say it may be nostalgia, but I still think it's just good quality. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm one of, I'm, I mean, I might be in the minority here, but I think actually the quality of film is actually quite good. And I remember when I saw the trailer for the first one, I was like, okay, Dwayne Johnson in it and Kevin Hart's in it. That's great. And Karen Gillan's in it. I love these actors and, you know, Jack Black. I love the actors. But when I saw the trailer for the first film, I actually was of the reverse of James. I feel like I, feel like I watched it and I was like, this looks like trash. Like, I was actually very afraid of this movie, like, kind of damaging the, the original film, film's legacy. But when I watched it, I was like, holy shit, this is actually pretty damn good. Goddamn great. It's not the same, but it's still the same in, in certain aspects, and it actually adds on a lot more to the story and to the world of Jumanji. And like he said, I actually see in the second one, I was a little worried about how bringing bringing their you know their grandparents into it, but it worked just fine. It's the smoke. It it works. It worked oh just fine. It looked great. And I actually watching am, the Rock try and do uh, Danny DeVito for half an hour is funny. probably one of the best. Um, He's so good. Comedy experiences I've had mm -hmm. in a long time. <laughs> He's so good. And so, yeah, it makes me excited for that one. So, like we've been talking about, it's word of mouth with these nostalgia films and these nostalgia shows. And as long as the quality is good, I think that's what will keep bringing people back. Because, yeah, you're, you're getting these actors and you're getting, or you're getting these worlds to bring people into their butts in the seats, but you're also depending upon word of mouth or even just uh, even just quality of, the, of these things to – get the more get more people on board and maybe possibly revisit things that they haven't watched before especially like these newer generations because they're relying on our generation to then show our kids about these things from the past and kind of keep building upon that which speaking of worlds that's kind of a good transition for you james you said another one that you wanted to talk about briefly that you weren't too excited for i think you said yeah um i mean i don't have much of an opinion because i didn't actually see this one but um, Glass being a sequel, fascinatingly, a sequel to two different films, both Unbreakable and Split. Mm -hmm. um, I loved Unbreakable. I actually thought it was better than The Sixth Sense. Um, that's my wow. opinion. People will differ on that. That's fine. I'm not offended by that. But um, I thought that it kind of left the story in a place where if there is a sequel, I'm there. If there isn't a sequel, I can live with that because the story is kind of you know, it's an origin story and it, it sets the character at a point where he is now ready to become the hero that he's sort of, sort of destined to be. And then the idea of them picking up and seeing where he's been all this time, 
appealed to me, but then I heard really not great things about it. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, it, yeah, I didn't get get around to it because the word of mouth was so bad on it. I, I have not seen it. I I so it's all Josh right now. Well, okay. So <laughs> going into this world, I remember when I first watched Split. I was just thinking this was just a great standalone film. M. Night Shyamalan's back, and he's you know becoming a great director game because er everyone will say I feel like after The Village, his quality just like took a nosedive, especially movies like The Happening, Lady in the Water. Uh, you you yeah. kind of <laughs> Last Airbender. Last Airbender. After <laughs> Earth. After he just Earth, made one I mean, terrible film after another after making two good movies. Like, but then he came out. But after 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 Earth, he came out with a little small little horror film, and then he kind of resurged, had a resurgence. And then when Split came out, I was like, "Oh my God, he's back!" I mean, this is who we've been waiting for. And then when that ending shot of Bruce Willis comes in, and you're like, "Holy shit, this is the Unbreakable World!" It just it heightened the excitement for not only the movie but what he's possibly what he was going to do in the future. And I say, James, you have to. I think you should watch Glass today if you have the time. Yeah, I was I'll telling him. Up. I was telling him before, so I'm a, a huge disagreement with the rest of the reviewers who have reviewed this and the critics. Because like, I remember what ending when I first, when the first viewing, I, I was questioning myself. I was like, this movie is either too big for its britches and it sucks, or it's actually masterful and I'm just not seeing it yet. And so I rewatched it. And this movie, in Glass, is a lot of nuance. There's a lot more nuance. There's a lot of things that happen within this within this film that are unsaid. There's more of character development more plot progression there's more there's more the the meat of the story is more what's not being said or shown and i think that's where the masterful part comes in and so i think after rewatching it you know after second viewing and more viewings after that i'm liking it more and more it really has more of the unbreakable feel than the split feel which i'm okay with it's a lot more slow paced but i feel like at the end of the day this was a very very strong trilogy and and Split definitely brought it back. And you can't... I was... James McAvoy should have got an Oscar nomination for his character. I mean, uh, the fact that he didn't piss me off. And to play that many characters fluently is masterful. But anyway, going back to that, I want to get off of that soapbox. I'm glad that this is over. I, I hope this is over. I think it ended on such a great note. And I, again, this was one of those ones that we didn't realize it was nostalgia until it was. And then we got a great sequel out of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to name a few that um, have come up and gone. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have strong opinions on them. Um, Mad Max Fury Road, oh, brilliant. which had a lot of praise. Um, I had the unfortunate problem of uh, a bladder infection in the middle of the film. Oh, God. So, like, I was holding it for so long during the film, trying to just watch the movie. I had to leave. And when I came back, somebody had stolen my seat. Oh, and I'm one of those guys out. who's not going to make a fuss in the middle of the movie to get his seat back. So I had to oh, sit at the very, very, very front of the theater looking up at it from like the far side of the theater. Oh, God. And it's like, this is running my entire enjoyment of this film. So I haven't actually gone back to revisit it. I know it's supposed to be a really good film. Um, Josh, yeah, Josh is the only, Josh is a hater. Uh, he doesn't not like a... the, the plot twist, but the fact that they change kind of plots, they go from one, go, doing one thing to doing another. But the fact is, it's, uh, it's all spectacle. Everyone agrees mm -hmm. it's all spectacle. It's, it's not like a character dream movie, but it's so I mean, that's what Mad Max films were. Yeah, but it's so good at the spectacle that even the Oscars are like, okay, it's Best Picture nominated. It's Best Director nominated. It's just, it's, yes, it's all spectacle. It's, it's like no character development, but it's so good at what it does. We just have to honor it. And, and my friend and I were leaving the theater like, no, 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 no. I mean, we were so jazzed. It was one of the best. It was like Terminator 2. When I tell my grandkids about my favorite thing, it's be seeing Terminator 2 with Josh and seeing Mad Max Fury Road with Brandon are two of my absolute all-time theatrical experiences. Here's, okay, so here's what I'll say. Okay. <laughs> I will acknowledge that the, uh, the no character development is fine. It's par for the course because you don't get much of that in even in the films prior. That's okay. Okay, that's not what it, it's about the spectacle here i agree um now the filmmaking aspects of it the action how it's all practical effects yes that is far and beyond some of the most amazing shit i've ever seen i mean it's it's really ridiculous how he was able to do that and from what i heard the they put their cast through hell to get it right but it worked and it ends up being a great quality of action 
that's where I leave it. The problem I had with it was the structure of the film as entirety. They're on this quest to go find this place and they get there and it's not there. And so they go back to where they were in the very beginning. I, I just, I didn't find it at all. They were trying to make this a compelling story and end up being a nosedive for me. No, it's it's because they go back. It's they're still fighting the same bad guy. They just change strategies from running away to running towards. I don't know. I haven't seen worst. it in a while. I may have to revisit it. But I, like I said, I just I did not like how it ended up being, and so I was just I don't know. I, but I will say yeah, like the, uh, all the action was great. The characters were great. I, I was actually more hoping to see like a Furiosa standalone no, film. We might still. We might still. We'll see. But I mean, um, what I will say about Mad Max Fury Road is that um, it's disappointing that Mad Max forgot to show up. <laughs> um, because it's, it's, I can't even say that it, it's, it's a, you know, it should have been its own film because it's very clearly within the Mad Max world. It's very clearly, you know, a Mad Max style and Mad Max sort of approach to things. But Max is barely in it. He barely factors in. It's all about Furiosa and um, what, what's his name? Something Joe? Yeah, I don't know. The, the I villain, the weird isn't enough. I villain don't, I, guy. I've, I've never gotten that. Yeah. I'll have to rewatch it, maybe. Yeah. But what was your last one? I think you had a couple more, didn't you, James? You had one more. You said Space Jam. Um, I mean, Planet of the Apes, um, oh. the new ones, I thought were terrific. Oh, my God, um, yes. I'm not going to go on and on about them. Um, I think <laughs> people have already done that, but I, I just wanted to mention them because I actually like the new ones better than the originals. Um, and then one more that I wanted to mention was um, Dr. Sleep. Oh, oh God, yes. Which I yes. love The Shining, oh, my God, and I yes. was so looking forward to Doctor Sleep. And on the fact that I like The Shining, and I like the book The Shining, and I just like the entire sort of history of both of them, and how they're so very different and in conflict. And you know, I thought this film did a lot to try and um, honor both. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of fell flat a little bit, but like I still really enjoyed it on basically on nostalgia alone. Like, um, had I seen this film by itself, it, I, I don't think I would have enjoyed it. But the fact that it's Danny all these years later, you know, coping with everything that he went through, and um, I mean, not to spoil anything, but they end up going back to the hotel and um, in the trailers. Is it in the trailers? I could. Yeah, it's in the trailers. Yeah. Um, and they end up honoring the sort of ending from the book um, that they had cut out of the original film um, a little bit there. And I, I just thought it was such, I don't know, just being a fan of The Shining, I just really enjoyed it. So I just yeah. wanted to give a little nod to that one. And well, I want to, a uh, couple things here uh, real quick. Um, I love the Planet of the Apes trilogy. I think especially the whole trilogy as a whole is probably one of the best trilogies of, our mo of modern cinema right now. Uh, it's a reboot, know. though. It's not a sequel. It's it's not. It's more of a reboot. You're right, but the the name factor of it's you know the, mm -hmm. the nostalgia aspect of it because it's been around for so long, and that's why I liked it so much. And the was it actually season. established that it it's not connected to the original films? Because I thought did. it was supposed to be sort of like if Pretty if cool. it was you know in the same universe or not. They ah, haven't okay. fully yeah. they haven't fully acknowledged it. They're still working on a fourth film. Maybe we'll get to that point. But the the original film is so far into the future that where they are now. Like that little girl is supposed to be the girl from the original film, the one who can't speak, but that's not going to work timeline wise. So it's a complete reboot in that factor, but who knows, okay. but they will see. But like I said, I just wanted to talk about that because I can't praise Planet of the Apes enough. I just, I just love that trilogy. But going now on to Dr. Sleep, I'm actually going to have to disagree with James, with you, James, okay. mainly because I feel like it was, it's, it's, yes, it's a continue, it's a sequel to The Shining, but it, I loved it because it was so different. The Shining was more psychological horror. This one was felt like more like a superhero horror film in a weird way. And I actually loved it for that fact because the girl, she was such a little badass and they brought in back Danny and he kind of becomes more of like a mentor to her, kind of like he's becoming the guy who, he, who the guy was in the original Mr. film. Mr. Holleran. Yep, exactly. And I just, I know I really love, I, I didn't feel like it felt fine at all. I feel like it ended perfectly how it was going to go. I felt like. And I just yeah. love the new girl. I love the new girl. And I just, like I said, it felt like when I loved you, when I, after the movie, I was like, this is like a horror superhero film. And I'm okay with that. 
I, I loved the the action horror aspects of it. I loved the villain. I actually felt like the villain had way more screen time and more backstory than I was expecting, and that's yeah. a good thing. And so I just I thought Ian McGregor did a great job with Danny, and I don't know. I I left it I, and I had Tina watch it. And Tina's not a huge fan of like my serious horror film. She more <laughs> she loves she loves more. She loves horror. like butcher 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 man five. Yeah, you know, she loves like these schlock fest. She loves, these, she loves these B horror films, especially about possession and stuff. So when she walked, when she, after she saw it, she's like, that was actually really great. And it's very yeah. rare for her to like, you know, horror films like these. So I don't know. I just, I was, had to disagree. I didn't feel like it felt flat at all for me, but I just, that's, that's what you sure when I say flat, I, I'm, I'm reviewing that objectively. Yeah. While separating all out the fact that I absolutely love this film. Yeah. But entirely based on my love of The Shining. Mm. Um, where I can I can give passes to a lot of things that I think don't work, um, and we'll we'll get to that in a bit because I have a feeling Ryan's going to ask me about another franchise where the sequel is not great, but I absolutely love it. Oh, okay. uh, we could, yeah. But I was actually just going to say, can I interject? I'm God, you guys are going to gang up on me so much. I have never watched The Shining. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> can you no, watch I'm, it I'm right not now? A, <laughs> I'm not a gatekeeper on stuff like that. Like, if you haven't seen a film, that's fine. I actually like when people haven't seen a film because it gives me the opportunity to introduce it to them. Right. Um, I love making people watch The Godfather. I love it. It's oh, so uh, good. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not like I'm not a, a gatekeeper in that. So I just love giving people shit for things that they yeah. haven't. Like, because Ryan is yeah, probably crazy. more uh, just as much, if not more, of a film like a um, a cinephile than I am. Yeah. And I just, oh yeah, I he's was, a walking I'm, IMDb. I know he is. And I was just, just now, I was just shocked, shocked to hear that he has never seen The Shining. But then again, he's not a huge, you're not a huge horror film person. So I guess I can not really. that. But you should definitely, I mean, I would love to, if, if it's possible, like we should do like a little watch party and like all watch huh. The Shining in our respective homes. On I would watch The Shining. I would watch The Shining right now. Just, oh, we do it. We do I it. might actually go watch The Shining. <laughs> all right. It's actually, right. I'm not a big fan of um, Kubrick. But The Shining is absolutely my favorite Kubrick film by far. So like no hard. film nerd ever. I'm not a big right? fan of Kubrick. I know, no. I know. A lot of film nerds won't talk to me because I actually like Spielberg more than I like That's, um, Kubrick. And a lot of film nerds are like, what? I actually haven't seen most of his films, so I can't really formulate an opinion. I haven't seen a lot of those classics like The Shining or Full Metal Jacket or anything, but I... Like it's just crazy to hear. I, I can't even I can't even refute you. I just it's just a crazy thing to hear is all. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, to be fair though, I haven't seen Strange Love, and I've heard that that is that's by far Gene, his best film. Yeah. Gene Siskel's favorite movie of all time. I yeah. mean, yeah, Clockwork Orange to me is absolutely just on another level, and also just uh, 2001: Space Odyssey, one of the greatest sci-fi films ever made. But, anyway. Also, never seen. So see, I can't even refute oh, things and say that's like, very much love. on that one. <laughs> right. But, but what was the, so? What's this one that? You guys keep talking about this. <laughs> well, this is a different uh, category. This is we'll, ones we'll that are get, upcoming. So okay. The upcoming. So we'll, we'll transition into upcoming now because I think we've covered everything else. The first upcoming one that's coming out later this year, presumably, allegedly, is Top Gun Maverick. Um, oh, yeah. Don't know why it's taken 30. It's 34 years since the, since the original. Um, it's going to be Goose's, him coaching Goose's son. He has a new love interest because Kelly McGillis, you know, not around anymore for acting um he, so he's gonna fall in love again and hmm. i'm not really sure what fresh stuff the story is going to give us um or if there's going to be a compelling story to tell about maverick again but we'll see um i'm, I'm a i like the original film i'm not a huge fan but mm -hmm. yeah. so well okay well uh, give, I'll, I'll transition to DJ just real quick here given a uh, peek behind the curtain to some of my personal life i'm prior military and i worked on uh, i was a weapons loader on the f-16 and b2 so given what Top Gun's fighter jets were back then to what they are now, I can see them having a lot of fun on the action side of it with these new jets and what they're actually able to do in the air compared to what jets would be able to do back then. So that's kind of a little, what you were saying there, what they, what they could bring new to it. There actually is, given what some of these fighter jets can do now, these newer designs, you actually can do a lot of fun little things in the air with these fighter jets. So. I, I'm not the biggest Top Gun fan, but I did grow up on it because my dad had like three movies he watched over and over again. Braveheart, Top Gun, and Days of Thunder. And <laughs> Where's like, Braveheart to, damn it? <laughs> we'll be getting that. Yeah. So Top Gun was one of those ones, like, I like it. Um, it. 
the re main reason I actually love Star Wars was because of the dog fights. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I tend to favor the original trilogy over the um, sequels because they, they, they kind of petered off on that. So Top Gun to me is one of those films where it kind of feeds that um, sort of dog fight enjoyment. But I, 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 I'm not, you know, I'm not jiving for a sequel. And to be honest, if they have another sequence of, you know, all of the guys playing volleyball in a homoerotic scene on the beach, Val Kilmer's not looking so great these days. So it's in the trailer. Is it in the trailer? It's in the trailer. Oh they have volleyball. I don't know if I'm ready for that, but you know, I'll be there day one, I guess, because I'll probably take my dad because. I'm the only one he's going to actually go like that's the only way he's going to go and see this film and he needs to see it in the theaters. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not that jazzed for it, but I, I'm sure there's an audience for it. There is. Yeah. Chad, there you know, is. the Josh mutual acquaintance, Chad Tim is like this really um, studious guy. He wears a tweed jacket and a bow tie and he's, <laughs> and he's like, he's, he's a great he's doctor. Who. He had, no, well, he's, he's just, he's a very studious guy. He reads a lot of, he, he mm -hmm. can, you know, quote you, he's an encyclopedia of philosophy and all that. He's very passionate about education. He turned into a junior hire when the Top Gun movie was announced. Like he, like <laughs> he, so he's a child of the eighties. And so yeah. there's people definitely who are going to hear that, that, that tune. Oh, yeah. And they're going to freak out. So it definitely has an audience. I don't think a, any one of us are quite the target audience, but yeah, he, he was a professor of mine when I went to uh, college at Grandview. Great professor. Be him bonded over House of Cards. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and what was the next one? Next one, and this is what we've been teasing you a little bit, bit about. So you don't know James, Josh, but if you've known James for longer than the, the two hours that we've been doing this, uh, <laughs> you will know that James is an absolute diehard Ghostbusters fan. That is his favorite okay. thing ever. Okay. Ghostbusters is my absolute favorite franchise. Like, I love Star Wars. I love Back to the Future. I love Lord of the Rings and the MCU and all this stuff. But Ghostbusters, I've lived and breathed since I was a child. I don't actually remember the first time I saw the film. That's how early in my life I saw it. Um, I was two years old when it came out, and I wore out three different VHS tapes or because how? my dad would tape it. My dad would tape it every Halloween. Hmm. because they would show it on the local TV station mm -hmm. and I would wear out that copy of the tape before the next Halloween because I would watch it to the end, rewind it and rewatch it and just do that endlessly for days on end. This um, is actually, yeah, this is actually really fun because um, there's two instances that I've met Ernie, um, Ernie Hudson and both times, uh, uh, well, the first time I actually got him to record a, um, a video message for you. That was like, yeah, I remember that. that was like, 15 years ago that's crazy um and then the other time uh he came to des moines for the first ever des moines wizard world comic con um and literally i walked through the front gate said i'm gonna go to the bathroom walked into the bathroom did my business walked towards the faucet and then out of the stall walks ernie hudson <laughs> <laughs> and we have like this brief conversation while washing our hands like oh welcome to des moines yeah and so i put it on facebook and i just knew i was waiting like three two one james <laughs> like i hate you <laughs> so but. so you, you've actually had closer proximity to a ghostbuster than i have and i lived mm -hmm. um less than a mile away from dan Aykroyd's cottage wow growing awesome. up now i i love the original film as well i i watch that movie every halloween because i still even though it's not very horror-esque it still has horror elements and I think it's just a perfect kind of movie to watch around Halloween time. And, but the second movie for me, like as a kid watching the second movie, I liked it a lot, but now watching it as an adult, I just, it, the quality drastically reduced from the original film. It, it's the sequel I was referring to earlier when, it, when I was talking about the way they okay. rehashed the film without having, you know, the sort of heart and characterization from the first film. Yeah. Um, that said, I love the hell out of that movie. Yeah, it's, it's a bad it's movie. Fun I recognize its flaws, but I love the hell out of that movie. Oh, yeah. I have those two where I know the movie is not that great, but I don't give a crap because I just love yeah. it anyway. I have those movies too. That's fair. I, I mean, mean I'm a Ninja I mean, Turtles fan too, so oh, yeah. like, it's been nothing but things. diminishing returns. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I didn't mind the first remake. <laughs> oh, I actually, I, the... I, I will say the second remake was at least fun, and it was enjoyable to watch them bring certain characters to life. Get off and rock, yep. yeah. Yep, yep, and, yep. Well, Krang less so because I didn't care for the voice actor or the characterization no but, yeah. but it, no, i mean 
Guys, yeah. focus. Ghostbusters. <laughs> yes. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters Afterlife. I have been waiting for a Ghostbusters sequel for 21 years. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, 31 years, isn't it? 31 years, yeah. 31 years I've been waiting for a Ghostbusters sequel. There have been rumors since 1996. Dan Aykroyd has been putting out, right. you know, he had the Hellbent script and he had other ones. There was going to be ones with, you know, Ben Stiller was going to be in at one point and then the guys from the 40-year-old Virgin were going to be in it and then, um, you know, they've had Chris Rock attached and um, it's, it's just been Murray's rumor fault, after rumor it? after rumor and mm -hmm. then 2016 they had a sequel or they, they had the, the remake which Reverse. you know everyone will say what they will about that I enjoyed it it's not the original it's um, okay it's okay I'm I'm I think it, it it took too much of a negative reputation um because of a certain sort of toxic group that was not a big fan of it for very obvious reasons mm -hmm. um and I think that was kind of unfair that said this one I have been looking forward to, you can say, for most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, Ghostbusters Afterlife was actually supposed to come out last month. Yeah. Yes. I was so depressed when I looked at my phone because on my phone wallpaper, you guys can't see it, but my phone wallpaper is the poster for the new film. And at the bottom, it says July 2020. <laughs> and I got depressed that day because obviously we're not getting it till March now. Yeah. We, and and this movie, why yeah, open in like... March? Like, open in October, wait till summer. Don't well, lately, in March. Lately, Do you really want to wait that much longer? I think you're chomping at the bit. Well, he's actually, March, you can't see him. He's actually, the reason you can't see James is because he's actually standing in front of the theater waiting until March. <laughs> I'm going to risk COVID to see this damn movie. So, yeah. well, What I think what plays good about the new Ghostbusters Afterlife is that it's playing on all those key elements that we agreed are what help bring people back to the theater and the everyday going audience for this movie. You have the original cast coming back that um that helps bring those people those nostalgic people butts back in the seats but it also has a tremendous young cast i mean we got finn yep. wolfhart which of course everyone knows him from stranger things he's you know he's probably one of the great up-and-coming actors they also have mckenna grace which if you haven't seen the movie the gifted she is fantastic actress a little young actress she and steals I, the show in the trailer for this too she does and i think that's that's the keys we're seeing here i think we can all agree like we've been talking about these is that those if people if people if you know, studio heads want to make these films and rehash these nostalgic factors. You need not only the great cast, but you need a great young cast to help bring casual fans in, but you need a great story. And mm -hmm. I have this feeling that with Paul Rudd in there as another new character, it's going to add some more, add some more to it. And uh, this is another one I can't, I can't wait for. I, I'm in agreement. I'm sad that, you know, because of COVID, we're having to wait a little bit longer, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. And Again, so, I've waited 30 years. Waiting another six months is not going to kill me. Yep. Well, and I think, it, and yeah, going back to what you said, why it's being released in March, I don't know. If it, it seems like the more and more big movies we're getting, the more and more earlier that month of summer blockbuster feel is moving backwards more. Like, it seems now March is now the start off to the summer blockbuster season. I was going to say, it does feel like they're encroaching into April a lot more because May was traditionally like the big summer movie mm -hmm. kickoff month. Mm -hmm. And yes, they are encroaching. Like, I think the two or three of the last couple of Marvel films open in April. April, late April. Um, yeah. But March always felt to me like a dead zone for films. Like that's where you go to bury your film with the exception of being that was Deadpool. January. Mm -hmm. Well, January, yeah. you're still kind of working off of the, the um, like Christmas. Awards. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. There's the big awards push. There's, you know, the, the post Christmas, you know, people have like all the kids have the gift certificates they got from their grandparents for Christmas yeah. to go see movies and whatnot. Um, so that's that tends to be where you get the sort of kiddie movies. But to me, this is kind of a movie you either put in June because that's where you put the original film, or you put it in October because of the you know ghost horror factor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I think when everything's being pushed back the way it has, I think they just had to find a perfect slot to because that's why I think Deadpool pushed themselves into February. They knew they had a great film, but they needed somewhere where they're not going to be encroached by a bunch of other big time blockbusters to be able to get that box office money. So I feel like if if we're going off of faith here that this movie is going to be great, I think March actually is strategically a good time because there's not a lot of stuff from right now, a lot of stuff going to be in its way for box office numbers. Well, we're also, it, it does have the benefit of um, we're coming out of, I mean, we're not coming out of, but we're, we're, in terms of movies, we're coming out of this COVID sort of dead zone where we can't go see any movies, but movies are also not getting made. 
So we're going to have a dead zone in about a year, year and a half where there's not going to be a lot of TV shows. There's not going to be a lot of movies unless they fast track them. So movies like Ghostbusters and like, um, um, what's the Marvel one? Uh, Black Widow. Yeah. Those are going to have to fill the gap kind of thing because um, first of all, these studios need to make back their money, but we're going to have, you know, a, a no man's zone of like just nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys talk a lot about the release date. I, let's, let's, what, what, what can we say about the movie? What I'm excited about is it's from, you know, Ivan Reitman's son, Jason Reitman. So Ivan Reitman made the two Ghostbusters movies and then lo and behold, his son ended up becoming this two-time Oscar nominated uh, auteur director who's now making, he considers himself, he said, I'm the first Ghostbuster fan because I was there on set playing with proton packs before anyone ever knew about it. Um, <laughs> yep. and, and so the fact that he's coming is- He was actually in the second film. Is, um, he's credited as the Brownstone Kid. Okay. Because he's, huh. the, he's, the, he's the, what Dan Aykroyd refers to as the um, ungrateful little yuppie larva. Because <laughs> he's the one that comes up to Dan Aykroyd and questions him about you know, the legitimacy of ghost busting. Okay. Wow, I'm wondering- I'm wondering Sorry, about um, how much everyone's going to be in, because I know even Sigourney Weaver and Annie Potts have signed on. Uh, and, but I also know that the stories about these kids and they, they're discovering kind of becoming a new generation of Ghostbusters. I'm wondering, is everyone just kind of going to make a glorified cameo or are we really going to get some more story material out of them? My understanding is what we've seen in the trailer is maybe about 30% of the film. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be the first and a little bit of the second act. Um, because first of all, we only see one ghost. Mm -hmm. We see barely any sort of like ghost activity. Um, like the, the, the scenes that we've seen have all been the same ghost. Um, but there's, there's this, <sighs> what I love about it is that the premise is based on the fact that um, some people might not know this, but Harold Ramis who played Egon Spengler is no longer with us. He passed mm -hmm. away um, several years ago um, and his presence is obviously lacking because he was, you know, part of the script team for the original film. And, um, you know, he, he's had such an intimate relationship with Bill Murray in their films, like how they've, you know, written stuff. And like, he's part of the reason why it's, you know, the, the original film is so funny. Mm -hmm. Um, he actually has some of my favorite lines in it. Um, and there's obviously going to be a huge absence with him gone. And I love that the film from go almost addresses that that you know these kids are you know being exiled from suburbia from you know their new york life and being forced out to this house in the middle of nowhere and they acknowledge you know that this is their grandfather's place and he was some old codger that you know who died and we don't really know him that well and mm -hmm. um he just left us this terrible old house and when paul rudd turns to the kid and says who are you and then she flips over the um flight suit and it says Spengler on it um, I mean it was obvious from you know the way they've done her hair and um, oh yeah like her glasses and everything that they're, they're trying to emulate her to be Egon and her solving his little puzzle on the floor it's very clear to me that Egon has gone off like Ghostbusters disbanded Egon has gone off and is living in this old house now um, and has been tinkering with the gadgets for years because the proton packs and neutrona ones are actually modified from the original film um because i'm on all the fan groups and they've gone through frame by frame and looked at all the different ways and like these guys know every single part on the pack where it came from what original machine it came from what it was originally used for where to order it um mm -hmm. so they they know these packs inside and out and like obviously you know time has passed and he's been tinkering with all this stuff and i'm fascinated by why he's there Mm. and the mystery to me like i think the this is going to be speculation on my part so if you don't want any potential spoilers for the film i would suggest people duck out now but um i think that we we see the mine in the very first shots of the film all the teenagers are hanging out there and they're you know there's a big you know sort of shake and then this like spectral energy comes blasting out of it and I think that's based on the signs around the mine, um, the signs all say Shandor Mining Company. Now, if you know your Ghostbusters lore, Evo Shandor was the original architect of Dana Barrett's apartment in the first Ghostbusters film. Mm. He was a cult leader for Gozer, 
the, the villain of the first film. And he is obsessed with trying to open these gates to let Gozer in. My theory is that these mines are actually his sort of backup plan. Mm. When the um, building didn't work for him initially, I mean, it did years later, long after he died, but I have a feeling that these mines are actually where he's going to be trying to open up the gate again and allow maybe not Gozer, but something else through, maybe. I don't know. But they're very clearly trying to harken back to the original film with that tiny name drop, sort of obscure name drop if you don't know your Ghostbusters lore well enough um, to kind of imply that, you know, there are connections between these things. This isn't just, you know, kids running around with proton packs. There's, and there, there's even a shot with um, Paul Rudd in the car and you see what's very clearly um, one of the gargoyle monsters hands come down, um, hmm. stomp onto the thing. Like I would know that paw anywhere because I'm staring at the action figure right now. So <laughs> um, I can tell you for sure it's, it, it's, it's um, one of those monsters. Um, like those little those little tie-ins to me are exactly what make this so appealing and of course okay. the absolute stunning shots of you know they're they're dealing they finn wolfhard finds this old car in the garage as you know you can see him kind of tweaking with it and then you see the like um the sheet over it kind of like flutter and you see a hint of the logo and then they finally pull it off and it's just zipping through the cornfield and then zipping through the streets with the, the um, mm -hmm. suicide slide outdoor and they're blasting the very broken particle stream. And like, <laughs> I've absolutely lost the train of thought. I'm just, just <laughs> no, going geeking out on this because I'm so excited for this movie. What I yeah, like, I'm just podcast. reiterating the trailer to you at this yeah. point, but no, like, what I all of these details to me give me so much hope for this movie. Um, in a way that I haven't felt in a long time. Like I had actually given up on there ever being another Ghostbusters film mm -hmm. um, just because we'd been teased for so long. And with the flop of the 2016 film, um, I didn't think it would actually happen. Mm -hmm. And then just out of nowhere, we get the original teaser for this and the announcement that, you know, Ivan Reitman's son is coming back. Jason Reitman is coming to direct a film. And it, like, it's, it's already been greenlit. They're already moving forward with it. Yeah. Oh, it, was already, it was just like, it's yeah, just overnight this film just happens and I'm like we're already this okay, I'm not going to get excited until I see them shooting. Next thing I know they're in Alberta shooting. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get excited until I see a trailer. Boom, there's a trailer. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get excited until the release of the film because I don't want to be disappointed but at the same time that trailer just grabbed me so much and mm -hmm. I'm going to let you guys get in a word in edgewise here because yeah, I've what? talked for like half an hour now, so one That's last cool. thing I'll bring it, in. We knew that was coming when James and no, Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> now, what, uh, what I find most, one of the most appealing things to me, and this will be my last final thought on it, is yes, we're having the characters come back and we're having these, like what I talked about before, those three-prong approach to bringing a franchise back. What I also find appealing is what I didn't find appealing about the 2016 version is that the atmosphere and the feel is still there. Like this trailer that we got from Ghostbusters Afterlife, it feels like the world of ghostbusters the original movie now i know it's not initially which was I something actually, i really liked about the cut of it because it actually the, the way it starts it feels like you know either a teen drama or family drama well no it's more and like then the, you get the surprise yeah yeah but it, it transitions into that but like i sorry i'm just a huge fan of the way that trailer's cut yeah yeah because it surprises you to a degree and it's just like sorry i'm going on again i'll let you talk no, no you're good you're good it's more about the it's more about the atmosphere and the aesthetic of the of the film and the feel of the world it's that's where 2016's didn't it felt too clean it felt too I, like i said i hate to bring that up again like i did with some sterilized of it felt more yeah it felt more that it felt a lot it just felt different whereas if it would have had that same feel of the written they just went a different way i would have been fine with it Whoa. Whereas this one, it really brings back that atmosphere of that world, kind of like that grittiness to it a little bit. That really, and I, and find I do appealing. think that this is a world that you can tell more stories in. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about that with Star Wars, about you know, there, there's so many stories you can tell within that world. I do think that there's more Ghostbusters to tell, even if it's not necessarily with the original actors. I'd be disappointed if you know they weren't part of it, but mm -hmm. I do think that there is a lot of room for potential there and mm -hmm. to not explore that would be just so disappointing to me. 
Yeah, Ryan. Well, I wanted to. Okay, so I, I really wanted to get into this with you, James. Um, so what I was talking <laughs> about with um, with Star Wars was I hated that they brought back the original characters and we found out their lives were just garbage after they, basically as soon as the uh, credits rolled and Return of the Jedi shit started to go wrong. Um, I, I one thing that I would be happy when we're gonna, we're going to see Peter and Dana again. Are they did they get married and have babies and live happily ever after and raise Oscar with the baby? As they're out at grown and just have the I mean, it, or is it going to be completely sideways from that? And are we going to see Oscar the baby? Is he going to be in this? I mean, so what are your thoughts on that? Your predictions? I think the group is, especially with the way they've implied that, um, you know, Harold Ramis, uh, Egon, especially went off on his own. I have a feeling that the group splintered. Mm -hmm. They're just too dysfunctional as a group to, you know, stay together for a long time. And I think that. Um, Paul Rudd actually mentioned that, you know, in the 80s in New York, there was all this spectral activity. It was like The Walking Dead, and now there's nothing. And these kids haven't even heard of the Ghostbusters. They have no idea what any of this stuff is. So obviously they've kind of gone away. And I think that the guys have gone their separate ways. And whether or not, I don't actually think Bill Murray and Dana will be together, although I don't know how you bring her into it without them being together. Yeah. Um, because she, she's almost kind of not integral to a ghost busting story mm -hmm. unless she's attached to the people involved and it would be like a stupid silly rehash if um she was involved without it being you know connected mm -hmm. to bill murray somehow um yeah. i don't know how you get around that i don't know how they will deal with that mm -hmm. um i do know that ivan reitman said when he read the script he cried so <laughs> i have Good. faith that Good. what they are doing uh, and what i've seen gives me faith that they they are going to honor everything that came before do their own thing and progress the story in a way that you know maybe the franchise can move forward onto its own um and i can kind of get to see these guys one more time and maybe say goodbye um especially mm -hmm. to egon because obviously we're never going to see him again mm -hmm. um which is going to be bittersweet but at the same time like I, I kind of need that closure. Um, so, man, you're gonna I, I don't watch know. Ghostbusters now. Have to watch <laughs> Ghostbusters after this. And you know, Josh, he will go off and he will just watch a movie. Like he will just, oh, yeah. yeah, he'll come back. Oh, I, uh, yeah, that's a whole thing. But uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters. I'll tell you, we'll, this is, you were saying um, you, you want to watch Ghostbusters. I'm like, which copy do you want? Because I've got like four <laughs> Blu-ray. I've got like a whole bunch of VHS. <laughs> I have got it on every single device I own on every single streaming platform. That's awesome. uh, if you don't have it, I can get you a copy. Oh, I got one. Don't worry. I got my own copy on, <laughs> on digital, but I just, uh, yeah, that makes me, I'm actually very curious to see where this franchise moves forward. And that, even if they just say goodbye to the, the old characters and, tra and transition to these new characters, if they did it right, I would be perfectly fine with it. And maybe we'll see Ghostbusters four and five with Bill Murray and everybody like just because they have fun doing it and it makes a lot of money. Just right off the bat, who knows? The future Who cares? Tell me a good compelling story. If if it's a good story and it's not like Star Sorry? Wars: The Force Awakens. So. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, that's I I think that's true of any franchise. Like regardless of what franchise you're bringing back, just tell us a good story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, moving on now, we haven't gone at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but next up is one that I think none of us are going to be that excited yep. for is Matrix 4. Uh, mm -hmm. for personally, I don't know how they're going to make a Matrix 4 when no one can figure out what the hell happened at the end of Matrix 3. Uh, but it has been, I've forgotten to do this, it's uh, been uh, 22, 22 years since the first Matrix, 18 years since the Matrix Revolutions. Um, uh, as far as I knew, both Trinity and Neo died at the end of the last film. So I'm not sure how we're going to get mm -hmm. it. But we'll, we'll see. I, I don't really have any thoughts on it hardly at all. So, yeah, I mean, I love the original <laughs> film. The first, the last two were okay. The I think I liked how it ended. It sort of. I kind of like how it ended. Not so, <laughs> not so much. Like it's just a can. It's just always a big a big loop of the one, which doesn't make any fucking sense. But so anyway, I don't like how I, I the first one is one of those revolutionary action films that will go down as one of the greatest action films of all time, regardless of what you think about the franchise as a whole. Uh, mm. So I'm just yeah, I'm with you. I don't. I have no clue how they're going to continue this. I don't know how Neo is going to come back. There's, I mean, but hopefully they'll surprise me. I'm hoping they'll surprise me because right now Keanu Reeves is on a roll. 
with John Wick and now Bill and Ted apparently. And he's, you know, I would even be okay if he brought back speed. Like if he oh, wanted I'm, to come back and do speed. We can do I a section on the long time sequels we want to see. Uh, yeah we could that could be a whole nother video yeah but no like i mean he's on a uh, he's on a resurgent and john wick did that so i'm i'm hoping that if he put his stamp of approval on it and he wants to be a part of it that actually is something good so james yeah i i don't have a lot of opinions about the matrix the first film was great and i think they kind of should have left it there um i understand why people wanted more of that story especially because you know they kind of imply that there was more and you know, they said that they planned more. I don't mm-hmm. buy that. I think they're George Lucasing us on that. <laughs> but um, it, I don't, I, you know, I don't have a dog in this fight. If they want to make another film, maybe I'll see it. I don't see the point because as you said, like the third one kind of tied up the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the first one stand, stands alone by itself and it should be fine by itself. If that was all that existed, I'd be happy. If just yeah. the trilogy existed, I don't need to watch the sequels, but the story is kind of told. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where they're going to go with the fourth film. But again, know. if they're going to tell a compelling story, then, you know, I'll watch it. Like, I'm, yeah, not a, can, yeah. I'm, yeah, like I'm not a huge, huge nerd on The Matrix like you are at Ghostbusters, James, but you talk about, <laughs> talk about guilty pleasures. I don't pleasures. think anyone is. <laughs> no, but you talk, like, you talk about like guilty pleasures. Like, I'm not a huge fan of the third one, but I'm one of those people who think Matrix Reloaded is actually kind of fun. It's like it's a lot of fun to watch. It's like I can easily watch one and two and be happy, whereas the third one, I'm just like, okay, you know, whatever. I yeah. think it'll leave it. Yeah. We'll see where they go with it. It's, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe it'll be good. Uh, the next up is Jurassic World Dominion, which I'm including because they are bringing back characters from the original who um, – it's been 28 years since the original. It's been 20 years since Jurassic Park 3, which was the last time we saw Alan Grant and Edley Sadler. But this film is probably going to ignore that. And we're going to be seeing the trio, sort of the Han, Han, Luke, and Leia of Jurassic Park again. Uh, Alan Grant, Ellie Sadler, and Ian Malcolm. So I'm kind of excited about that. Jurassic Park's never been the most character-driven uh, series. But for some reason, we are, a lot of us are really excited to see these characters together again. Yeah, and I'm only really excited for the characters to come back is because the three original actors have kind of had their own resurgence in their own respective careers. Mm-hmm. Like Laura Dern was in that uh, the uh, the one with Adam Driver and Scarlett yeah, Johansson. Yeah, Story. she won her Oscar for it for Marriage Story. Um, she's oh, in Star Wars. She's in yeah, she was in Star Wars. Also, um, uh, God, I'm blanking on their names. I'm sorry. Um, oh, help me out here, guys, please. I sound like a dumbass. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Gold. I mean, Jeff Goldblum. He has his resurgence from Thor and a, a couple other films. And then um, finally, the last actor, he was in a movie. That's, he's been in quite a few other things lately that has really brought him back to the forefront as far as, as, far as Hollywood. Sam Neill. So, yeah. yeah, Sam Neill, thank you. And so I, I, that's what kind of makes me excited because before you had some of these actors who are coming back and they haven't really done much, at least mm-hmm. not in the eye of the Hollywoods, whereas these guys, they've had their – I think the reason why they're coming back is because they've had their own resurgence and you can probably – have a great story with them included where it's not just for nostalgia factor. It's also because they're just, they're great actors in their own respective, you know, mm-hmm. fashions. I mean, not so much. I mean, Jeff Goldblum did bring back Independence Day, but I don't know if we want to we talk about that, that one. one. We forgot to do oh, that even, one. Yeah. I, I, I want to forget about that one. I want to forget about that one. That'll be our section on that one. Yeah. It okay. sucked. I didn't even see it. <laughs> We're going to kick some alien ass. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? All right, so that's our second How do you do, that? How do, you do another movie in that franchise without um, Will Smith? Right? Yeah. You can't. Like, it's impossible. No. But either way, like, I just, that's what kind of makes me excited is because these actors have had their own success in their own right, and they're not just coming back for nostalgia. They are coming back for nostalgia factor, but they're also coming back because, you know, they're having good success right now. And I'm also just I'm curious to see how this is all. I will say... I wasn't a huge fan of Jurassic World, the Jurassic World Two, but no. the ending got me super excited for this movie because I want to see what we've always been curious about. Because Jurassic Park Two hinted at this, and now we finally get to see what it's going to be like with these dinosaurs in the real world. Mm-hmm. How the how the world is going to like? I don't know if you guys saw that little short that they did with um, there was like this little TV short that they did with uh, I think it was like a year ago with this kind of hyping you up for Jurassic World 3 where like these kids, this family was camping out in the campgrounds and like this dinosaur like attacks the campgrounds. And I thought yeah, it was I shot. I remember that. 
Yeah, it was shot really well. It got me really excited for this. So I'm, I'm hoping it's good. I'm crossing my fingers. It's better than Jurassic World 2. Because I feel like in Jurassic World 2, just like until the ending, it like completely diminished all hope for this trilogy. Because I liked Jurassic World 1. I did. So, but this one, I think, hopefully will be actually really hoping it's going to be good. I'm, I'm indifferent because I love the original film. And I'm kind of always down to watch, you know, dinosaurs eat people. Um, Like I've gone to see every film in theaters, not with any expectation they're going to be good, but just sort of like, you know, it's, 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 you know, an indulgence watching, you know, decent CG eat people running around and screaming. Um, I enjoyed the first Jurassic world. Um, I especially enjoyed the ending, which a lot of people seem to hate. Um, I love the ending. (laughs) What about the the T-Rex coming back and the original T-Rex? That's probably third on my list of great theater. We talked about going to oh, see yeah. T2 and Mad Max. My friend Marcus and I went to go see Jurassic World. When that T-Rex came out, we cheered. That was so yeah. exciting. That was so awesome. And then the last that. shot at the end where it's, you know, roaring over top of sort of its domain <laughs> of the entire park kind of thing. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I thought, like, that's, that's probably one of the most iconic shots, Oh yeah. you know, Nintendo of the last history. 20 years kind of thing. <laughs> um, that said, I'm kind of tired of the, you know, um, not the genetically engineered dinosaurs because they were they've always been mm-hmm. the Jurassic Park franchise has always been about genetic engineering, yeah. but the sort, sort of like genetically modified super dinosaur oh, thing yeah. that they've done in the last three sequels. Yeah, um, I think like obviously they've that. negated they they, yeah. they 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 negated Jurassic Park three, but they had the I think it was like the Indominus. No, the Indominus Rex was the next one. Yeah. Um, the big the, the they, they had one in that one. Spinosaurus, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the Indominus Rex, and then now, like this one was the, the last one is entirely about, you know, the raptor. They're, they're they're so obsessed with trying to make dinosaurs into weapons. Um, mm-hmm. I do think the idea of having sort of the worlds of human and dinosaur mix, where it's not just humans encroaching on, you know, or, the realm yeah. of the dinosaurs, it's now dinosaurs encroaching on the realm of the humans. That could be interesting because we could end up with you know sort of Planet of the Apes situation where, oh yeah, you know. We, we jump ahead 10, 20 years and it's, you know, man versus dinosaur. I don't know if that's necessarily one or where I want to see the franchise go, but there's at least some possible interesting ideas there that could be explored. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. you said, that teaser that they put out about a year ago or two on, I think it was on YouTube. Um, yeah. I do remember having a very strong sort of reaction to that. That said... I don't know if I need another Jurassic Park film. Even with returning actors, I don't know if I need another Jurassic Park film. Again, I'll go see it because it's dinosaurs, but like, same with Jaws. The first one was great. Do we need sequels? Yeah. It doesn't advance the story. It doesn't advance the characters. And it's... I would have... You know, I would have agreed with you there. Like, why do we need one? But I think what's enticing me is, like I said before, is just the fact that we're finally getting where dinosaurs... And the in the human exist in the human world is actually going to finally find a way to coexist somehow. Mm-hmm. Like I know people are probably going to try and hunt these things. They're going to get probably shots of them hunting these down, and so forth. But like if blue, like how we know the lore of Jurassic Park or Jurassic, uh, yeah, Jurassic Park and the dinosaurs, blue went off on his own. But he's he or she is eventually going to have babies of his own or her own. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to have the eggs because they you know, life finds a way, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, because right now she's the last raptor that we know of. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, they'll have the last T-Rex and so on and so forth. So they'll find a way to, to grow, uh, not grow, but have more ant- dinosaurs in there. I would, be, I would be cool if a couple years jumped ahead and we're kind of just thrown right into the shit. Uh, but we'll see. I think that would be a lot better. But like I said, I, that's the only reason I'm enticed now even more. So like if they didn't have this aspect, I would not be excited at all. But it's the well, fact that we're finally getting this that we were teased is that uh, it's, make, it's making me excited. Well, I'm curious as to how all these three characters are going to come together again in the first place. Like, what's going to bring them um, together? Again? Oh, I have a huge, I have a huge theory, but like not theory, but I have a one. Of, you know, one of my, you know, my big predictions, uh, the bold predictions I get. Mm-hmm. Opening shot, Laura Dern comes face to face that T Rex, and she gets eaten. Oh God. Yeah. Either oh no, it's either Laura Dern. It's it's one of the three. It could either be Laura Dern, uh, Sam Neill, or Jason uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum. One of them is going to be opening shot. They're going to face face like T Rex, and they're going to get eaten. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Um, we, if we, uh, next one. I is, will uh, say oh, go ahead. one last thing about that. I will say I will watch Jeff Goldblum eat paper <laughs> because that man is so goddamn delightful to watch. Hell yeah, he is. And he would make that the most entertaining hour of my life. So <laughs> that said, you know, put him in a movie and chances are I'm going to go see it. Oh, yeah. All right. What's next? Space Jam, A New Legacy. 25 years since the original, also 18 years since the last Looney Tunes movie, Looney Tunes Back in Action. Um, any thoughts on this at all? I'm kind of like, whatever, you know? I love the original Space <laughs> Jam. I'm a huge fan of it. I mean, I grew up around that time frame. So, like, I loved it as a kid. And I still love it now. I still think it's pretty enjoyable. I'll probably have my daughter watch it when she gets old enough. With not having Michael Jordan back and we're, and we're putting in um, LeBron, sorry, LeBron James. James, I just... I'll still watch it. I just hope if they're going to continue on this world, they need to keep it, the feel of it. Again, the feel and the aesthetic needs to still be the same. Mm -hmm. and you're just kind of replacing one athlete with another. Yeah. Now it'd even be okay if they retreaded a little bit. But I don't know. We will see. I still think Space Jam is one of those great nostalgia, nostalgic films that has its following, especially because it's in the Bugs Bunny world. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not like, oh my God, I can't wait to see it. But I'm like, okay, I'm on board, you know. I'm I'm indifferent. Uh, I don't think I was the audience for the original. Um, I was in high school when it came out. I don't <laughs> think I'm the audience for the new one because, you know, I don't watch basketball. LeBron James is LeBron James. He's great <laughs> at what he does. And to be honest, you know, so many of the voice actors are now gone and they've replaced them two or three times. And um, it's probably just going to be wall-to-wall Billy West. So, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel the pull to this one nearly as much. And I just think I have to chalk it up to, I'm not the audience for it. And that's gotcha. fine. Like that I'm not bothered by a film existing that I'm not the audience for. Gotcha. All right. So we only got two more. Uh, and the next one, I don't think any of us are going to have much to say about. Um, Scream 5. It's been, again, it's one of those, it hasn't really been that long since the last one, but I decided to include it because the franchise has been going on for so long. 20, 26 years since the original, 11 years since Scream 4. Um, I will say that I was, am a huge fan of Scream and Scream 2. I think they're great movies. Kevin Williamson wrote those movies, really, really um, terrific uh, writer. Um, and then they had the third one, and Josh, you know this name, it was written by Aaron Kruger who went on mm -hmm. to write um, Transformers 4 and 5 and the Dumbo mm -hmm. remake and Scream Not 3 good. sucked. And I know that uh, Kevin Williamson came back to write Scream 4, which should make it the real Scream 3, but I never saw it. So I actually, okay, that's why I'm kind of a little bit excited for Scream 5 because Scream 4 is actually good. But I it's not Kevin Williamson again. Someone else is making it now again. Oh, uh, okay. So. Well, either either way, I felt like they, they got back in the right footing with Scream 4, where Scream 3 was just atrocious. Completely <laughs> sucked. And But I feel like Scream, Scream 4 was on par with Scream 2. Scream 1 will always go out on one of the greatest horror films because it mm -hmm. revitalized the, the slasher genre. But Scream 4, I actually, if I go back and, like, I will always avoid Scream 3, but if I was to watch the Screams again, I will always include watching Scream 4 again with it so and that's what kind of if it's still on par with that i'll enjoy it but you saying mm -hmm. that he's not coming back to write it makes it a little uninterested yeah but i'll still go see it i'll still go see it because i liked how scream 4 ended mm -hmm. the, the brilliance to, about scream and especially scream 2 to me is that they are not just great films not just great horror films but they are commentary on genre Mm -hmm. on sequels mm -hmm. and with Scream 4 on remakes, reboots, and updates. And if they've already done that with Scream 4, I don't know where they have to go with Scream 5. What are they going to commentate on? <laughs> and to me, that's... that's Good point. Like, Good point. And Scream 3 almost fits in to that too because um, I have a standing opinion that at least one chapter in most great trilogies is inferior to the other two films. Mm-hmm. And that film was entirely about trilogies. Um, so, like, to me, to me, like, you know, Godfather 3 wasn't as good as 1 and 2. And Return of the Jedi wasn't as good as Empire and Star Wars. You know, people will say that, you know, that Back to the Future sequels weren't as great as the original. 
I love all three of them. I will defend mm -hmm. them to the rest of my days, but um, there does seem to be sort of a dip in quality with at least one of the trilogy. And that held true with that one, even if they didn't intend it to. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know where you go with five if you've already done four, which was a commentary on, you know, where are these characters now kind of films and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the new generation kind of films and um, the uh, sort of update to horror films where they've done them 20 years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why I like the Planet of the Apes trilogy because I feel like it just got better and better as the trilogy went on. So I, I get what you're saying with the rest of them though. And this one, I think they're just doing because it did, did pretty decently at the box office, screen ported, and there has been a little bit of resurgence with this type of film because of the Scream TV show. It was getting a lot of good Which buzz I there. actually, I really loved the Scream TV show. Yeah. Um, it was a little too teen drama-ish at times, but I thought the horror aspects and um, the, the sort of mystery of it was actually really well done, and I yeah. don't think it gets enough credit within the franchise. Yeah, and, that, and, and to me, this is, it's not really... I feel like this has gone away from doing it for nostalgia factor, and it's more based on a cash grab now for me personally. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so. obvious. But the original actors are all coming back, even yeah. kind of like how um, I don't want to get into people's personal lives, but Terminator: Dark Fate it was like James Cameron and Linda Hamilton are coming back to make it. And their daughters would be like, "What? You two are working together? What?" <laughs> um, and this one is uh, David Arquette and Courtney Cox are coming back again. Um, yeah. So, but uh, but yeah. I mean, how many times can these people be terrorized by random people trying to imitate horror movies? It's like these poor bastards, <laughs> like their whole damn lives, every every ten right. or twenty years, right. um, they're they're being terrorized. But no, that that I don't know. We'll we'll see. One that we yeah. forgot. Oh, we just we just kind of like Independence Day. We can just throw out like you know uh, was uh, Bad Boys for Life. I didn't see it, but apparently it was pretty good. So right. Bad Boys is awesome. I love the first one. <laughs> I, the second one's a lot of fun for me. The third one actually was a lot better than the second. I feel like the story and quality was up there more. It had more depth to it as far as the characters. Uh, and we, because I'll just wrap this up quick. I don't know if anybody else has the thoughts on it, but I'm a huge Bad Boys fan. I love them all. And especially now, even with the how it ended and the cliffhanger, I'm excited to see a fourth one. They will be making a fourth one. They've confirmed it. I think the only thing I have to say about Bad Boys is that's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last one, guys, is um, in 2022, The Flash will, will be bringing back Michael Keaton's oh. Batman. From 19, so 1992, that's, uh, that's going to be 30 years between, uh, between Batman Returns and this film. I think a lot of people are really excited to see it, uh, even if that's the only thing about the movie they're excited to see. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a big fan. Say what? If this, the day this happens in the theater, I don't know if you can hear my daughter back yeah. there. She needs a nap. But anyways, no, I, I guarantee you the day when Brian's butt's in the seat and he's seeing this movie and Michael Keaton goes on screen as Batman, he's going to scream like a, like a five-year-old girl. Like a 10-year-old girl. Ah! You know my scream. <laughs> <laughs> you know my fanboy scream. But I think yep. that's the only thing like, that people are really excited about because I'm not a big fan of Ezra Miller as The Flash. I'm not really a fan of anything they, they've been doing. So, But that'll be cool. And I think it'll be based on the Kingdom Come interpretation where he's got like a bodysuit. Mm -hmm. That, like yeah. is robotic because he's old so so like mm -hmm. what they did with uh with the, the dc Wayne. tv series where yep. they brought back um what's his name who did the voice acting for kevin the animated Conroy's. series yeah. yep kevin conroy yeah he was actually in a like sort of it wasn't a battle suit but it was a like he, mm -hmm. he'd had his spine broken and he was like a very different man and um that was I actually one of the few scenes in that i actually enjoyed mm -hmm. <laughs> i will say this i feel like what has happened now with warner Bros. and dc is slowly becoming a happy accident. Now, what I mean by that is that they tried to build their DCU, but then it kind of, you know, crashed and burned for certain, you know, for the audience, and they kind of went away with it. Then they started making these other films, like they're making the Batman, they'd done Titans, they'd done the DC, uh, CW, and now that they're, I think the happy accident part is that they're gonna, they're gonna really highlight that this, oh, this is our, you know, this is our DC multiverse. Like they're gonna really use that and have flash be able to interact with other flashes or in, in him going through different universes i will say if they if it's done right flash can end up being the connective tissue that really makes their dc multiverse quote unquote work really well and it's so, funny you mention that because um i mean it's it's a year old now i guess or several months old now but um, Ezra Miller actually does make an appearance in that big crossover series. He does, yeah, he does. As his movie Flash. 
So yep. there does seem to be some intention to tie everything together. Yeah. And um, like I said, which I don't think they intended to do that. Yeah, sorry. I don't think they intended to do that from the beginning, but I think they definitely intended to do that with Flash because they have both Keaton's Batman, but Ben Affleck is coming back as Batman. Yep. And my only opinion of the DCEU so far has been that I feel like Ben Affleck got too much crap. Yeah, me too. And I think that his Batman could be an interesting Batman. I really want to see it done well, but mm-hmm. it's never really been given its proper due. Um, especially hope... with Justice League, the way they just kind of like, yep. Oh, it, oh such a disaster. I um, hope that with him coming on to do Flash again, like him coming back as Batman for the, for, I think they're calling it not just the DCU, but the HBO DC movie universe. Um, I hope that this means that we're finally going to get Ben Affleck's Batman. The script that he had with Joe Manganiello, Joe Manganiello as yeah. Deathstroke, like I, I put me on board for that because anybody who knows his his directing repertoire, he is a fantastic writer director, and for uh, I want to see that. Like I'm but happy. That's not going to happen. That's the reason the Pattinson film is happening because they, no, no, they, they no, decided not think, to go ahead with that. I think, yeah. the, the, but the rumor mill, the rumor mill is, is that's that's why he signed on to come back as Batman. Is that that was his agreement? And it's like, oh, you want me back as Batman? Fine, but let me make my film on HBO Max, and okay. that's I am perfect. And I would okay be with down that. with that. Me too. Because first of all, again, Batfleck didn't get his just do. I don't think he no. he um he wasn't perfect, but I think there's a lot of room for potential with him in that role. But at the same time, Deathstroke is probably my favorite um, DC villain. Mm-hmm. So and good in Arrow season two. So good. I actually didn't see him in Arrow season two, but I oh, dude, kind so of enjoyed him in Titans. Okay. And I would really like to see what they would do with him in a movie because I don't. Mm-hmm. That's another character I don't think has ever been given sort of his sort of like limelight. Um, he's always sort of shown up in other people's things. And again, this will be someone else's thing. But I think if you're putting Deathstroke as the villain in a movie, he's going to like mm-hmm. kind of take Definitely. up half the screen time kind of thing. Definitely. Well, any thoughts on uh, one one last one was actually just, just popped into my head just now. Is Indiana Jones 5? Anyone have any thoughts on that? Or because I don't. Yeah. Time is gone. <laughs> time, time. You need to put a nail in the coffin, Indiana Jones. I'm sorry. It's just no. I'm intrigued that James Mangold it, but... thinks it's a good enough movie to put his name on. So, who knows? And, uh, I'll go see it. You know, I'm always up for. I'll, I'll see what Spielberg wants to do, and you know, if they want to try and put together another story, I'll go see it. But I'm not exactly chomping at the bit for it, and I either. think they kind of nuke the franchise. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is too much of a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> the fridge. Yeah, it, it was, was the worst uh, thing ever. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe James Mangold will, will redeem it. Um, guys, we've been at this for like three hours. I think I told you like it was going to be like 40 minutes altogether, James. That's crazy. That's all right, man. Hey. Um, yeah, I told you. I could talk. Do, <laughs> yeah, do you guys, guys want to delve, delve into like potential ones that we'd like to see? Um, let's save that for a different video, I think. I think we can get this one up for the fans, like for anybody listening to it now. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you want to come back, we can probably do this next week. Okay. We can all make a list of what we think stuff we would love to see because I, I got a lot. I think I can write down a big list for that. I think I, I can that, think of one for you that's kind of like Ghostbusters for James. Probably. Yeah. It also probably. Me. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that, I think that I'd be down for that, definitely. <laughs> okay. Something else I'd like to throw in that conversation would be sacred cows, ones that we don't want to see them actually touch. Okay. Yeah, definitely. We could do that too. That'd be fun. Because I've got two off the top of my head, I never want to see a sequel to. Right. All right. Same. So, guys, all right, folks. Look forward to next week. Hell yeah! <laughs> but if Ryan thinks that's good, uh, good today, guys, that'll do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. This is a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. What is what? More importantly, for the audience there listening in on this, what is your favorite remake or you know continuation of Nostalgia Factor that you have seen? Leave your comments section below. Let us know your favorite, and just give us your thoughts on the show overall. If you like what we've done so far, let us know and we can continue on with discussions such as this. Also, if you like what you watch, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you can receive more of our various content in the future. Also, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Stardust, and the links are in the description below, as always. Again, that's all we have for today. I'm Josh Williams. I'm Ryan Murphy. I'm James. (laughs) There you go, James. Good job, buddy. And thank you for keeping it real. (laughs) 
with real time. Good night.